water. Earth. Fire. Air. The false Avatar Yun and his destructive campaign of revenge is at an end, brought down by the true Avatar, Kiyoshi. But the delay in locating and training her, as well as the disastrous actions of Earth Sage Xian Zhu, have left the Earth Kingdom weak and vulnerable. Bandit groups known as Dao Fei vie for power and territory, and even the citizens behind the walls of Ba Sing Se are not safe. Remnants of the Fifth Nation, a southern water tribe pirate group, and the Yellownecks, a particularly brutal outlaw organization, still linger in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to strike. With the Earth Kingdom in disarray and Kiyoshi needing competent allies to help restore balance, who will answer the call? Hello! Hello! Uh, Welcome! (laughs) Welcome, everybody, to our brand new Avatar Legends campaign, The Legacy of Kiyoshi. I know it's been a while since we have seen all of your gorgeous faces. If you are coming, joining us here tonight after watching through our uh, book one, Embers of War campaign, thank you so much! It's wonderful to see you. If if you're here for the first time and this is this is your first experience of the Lost Archives, welcome. We're going to be playing a tabletop role-playing game called Avatar Legends, which is set in the world of Avatar The Last Airbender. We are going to be, obviously, I've given the game away a little bit, we are going to be uh, having our campaign take place during Kiyoshi's era. Um, what? Specifically, <laughs> specifically right after the end of uh, The Shadow of Kiyoshi, which is the second book in the... Um, Avatar Chronicles, the first one being The Rise of Kiyoshi. Now, obviously, none of the players have read either of those books. No. (laughs) So, once again, it's going to be up to me to make sure we stay on track and canon. Um, For those of you who've watched... uh, Yep, Bree? Um, Has Andrew actually watched any of Avatar The Last Airbender now? He's watched it all. Oh, nice! I I haven't seen Korra yet, but like... No one watches Korra. (laughs) That's a, that's a hard it's stance a, a to start. take. Um, I, I, I just haven't watched it, that's all. Okay. And I, and I know some good. of Korra, like Korra. And that's I know about some of the Avatar history now. We've talked like, about this. We talked about this last time. I just haven't gotten around to it. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I so, also haven't gotten around to it, don't worry. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, I, look, I, I quite I quite like Legend of Korra myself. I know there are some people who don't like it as much, but um, once you get past the fact that it's not the gang um, and you let yourself to be open to experiencing a new era with a new cast of characters it's a lot of fun and some of the later series are pretty epic with what goes down my goodness we've we've had that we've had the first (laughs) we've already had a redeeming of points uh kiko's been given advantage already we haven't even introduced characters yet and we've already had advantage uh i was about to say who the hell is kiko (laughs) kiko is brandon's new character look i think uh we could we could we could talk for a long time about (laughs) we could talk for a long time about lots of stuff We are going to be introducing the time period. We're going to be introducing all of the aspects of the game. Obviously, in our session zero for Avatar, it's mostly about getting to know the characters. We're going to be having a bit of the um, having a bit of the experience of the the narrative introduction. Uh, because these lovely people are not as familiar with the Kiyoshi books as I am, there's some important context that I'm going to give them. Uh, in this introduction to get them up and running and we will be exploring a lot of the past events that occurred during this campaign so those of you who are fans of the Kiyoshi novels I've got some really good news I'm going to bring as many of the characters who survived both books uh, into this campaign um, wherever I possibly can so we're going to see a lot of a lot of characters uh, from the from the books hopefully if there's any characters you really would like to see from the Kiyoshi novels make sure you message me either in the comment section below Twitch live chat or just on the Discord. If you just send me a message or check it in the Avatar chat, I'll make sure to include as many of the characters as I possibly can. Um, now, before we start with the character introductions, obviously everyone who is watching on YouTube or on Twitch can already see the artwork of the characters. Um, but for those of you listening to the podcast, we're going to keep the character description just for a moment. I'm going to read the introduction to the story get us all into the right headspace and kind of orient us in time and place as we start our session zero. So I will start with that and then we will go through the characters. Uh, Obviously the players have picked their characters and their playbooks. We're going to be going through in a little bit more detail with their characters to have a bit of an understanding about what their motivations are and we're going to be making some changes to them as well, adding in some custom moves where we need to do that and ensuring that we've got everything we need to get running. Andrew, you look really nervous for a second. What's going on? I can't remember anything. You can't remember anything. What do you mean? 
just continue. We'll figure it out. You, do, you don't need to remember anything. Like, I, the, the plan is that you haven't created your characters as like a fully fleshed out character. The plan is that you have a style of combat, you have a playbook, and ideally we needed a character name and description so that I could do the artwork for the overlay. Oh, so you've, okay, cool. You've got everything you need. We're all good. Thanks, Dan. There's, there's, there's no need to panic. Uh, alrighty. Let me read the introduction and we will jump into our session zero. The false Avatar Yun has been struck down and the world now knows the name of the true Avatar, Kiyoshi. But the delay in locating and training her, as well as the disastrous actions of Earth Sage Jian Zhu, have left the Earth Kingdom weak and vulnerable. Bandit groups known as Dao Fei vie for power and territory, and even the citizens behind the walls of Ba Sing Se are not safe. Remnants of the Fifth Nation, a southern water tribe pirate group, and the Yellow Necks, a particularly brutal outlaw organization, still linger in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to strike. To help maintain order, Avatar Kiyoshi has spent the last three years establishing a special strike force in Ba Sing Se, earthbenders sworn to hunt down and capture violent criminals. But when duty calls Kiyoshi away, Earth King Yi Ming seizes control of the forces and twists them to serve his own political ends. Disillusioned with the political games taking place in Ba Sing Se, Kiyoshi and her partner Rangi have moved out to the Yokoya Peninsula and have begun rebuilding the town surrounding the ruins of the Avatar Estate. With the Earth Kingdom in such disarray, Kiyoshi is searching for allies who can assist her in restoring balance. So that is where we are going to be jumping in. Our adventure is going to be starting out at the Okoya Peninsula, a strip of land south of Ba Sing Se at the very southern borders of the Earth Kingdom. Uh, if you were to imagine Ba Sing Se in the very center, you'd be traveling southwest down towards the Southern Air Temple and Southern Water Tribes uh, and a little bit towards the Fire Nation. This peninsula doesn't actually really exist anymore in Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, certain events that take place with Kiyoshi and a um, particularly violent soldier known as Chin the Conqueror uh, result in this peninsula actually being turned into an island and moved into the Southern Ocean. So, we're going to be starting quite a while before this occurs, um, before Chin has risen to power and before Kiyoshi Island and Kiyoshi Village have been formed. Alrighty. The four of you have come to the village of Yokoya, searching for wealth, for renown, for prestige, maybe even to escape from situations in which you are being oppressed by a totalitarian government, the Fire Nation having recently gone through a pretty brutal civil war. The current Fire fire Lord actually not... Yeah, yeah, yep. So there's been a civil war in the Fire Nation that's just taken place, and the preferred Fire Lord is currently imprisoned. His brother has taken the throne. Uh, that has only been resolved in the last couple of years. So the Fire Nation is currently in the process of being turned into an empire. The clans are slowly being abolished. In the Earth Kingdom, the Earth Sages are all but wiped out. Um, one of their number, Jian Zhu, who claimed to have found the Avatar, um, a certain young man named Yun, um, poisoned them when it was revealed that he had lost control of the Avatar um, and uh, was going to be taken away from training the Avatar as the, as the Prime Sage, actually poisoned and killed most of the Earth Sages. So there's been a lot of political upheaval in the Earth Kingdom as well. The Southern Water Tribe had a pretty rough start as well with a large number of their soldiers and fleet forming a pirate nation known as the Fifth Nation, which began claiming land. However, when negotiations between the Avatar, Avatar Yun, uh, were, to take, were taking place, the Fifth Nation was wiped out mysteriously, and no one has yet claimed responsibility for that. Um, a massive pillar of earth rising uh, from the water, uh, crushing most of the ships and causing them to, uh, to flounder and sink. Meanwhile, the Northern Water Tribe is actually doing really well. No problems with the Northern Water Tribe, they're having a great time. Uh, the Air Nomads, a number of the spiritual sites have been lost. They're no longer being cared for due to danger to Air Nomads traveling between different areas. And a number of the Air Nomads who were strict adherents to the spiritual lessons of great sages and teachers have become disillusioned with this spiritual aspect of the Air Nations and have begun sort of almost moving and distributing themselves throughout other nations, moving around and, and no longer beholden to the temples, meaning there are no longer enough people to keep a number of the sacred sites well-maintained and looked after. Um, 
I like how our two airbenders uh, immediately started looking very guilty when I was describing that particular moment. So whatever your reasons, and we'll, and we'll go through and discuss what each of your reasons might be, but whatever your reasons are, the four of you have come to Yokoya Village knowing that Avatar Kiyoshi and Rangi have called for help to maintain balance, to remove these bandit organizations who have almost become like a legitimate militia, the Dao Fei, this like widespread group of various uh, bandit and militia organizations. T to get rid of them, Kiyoshi is looking for assistance and help. The village of Yukoya is positioned on the southern tip of this large peninsula. It's a port town, but not in a strategic position for trade or for military use. And as each of you arrive, uh, either on Sky Bison, by boat, or walking. You find yourselves walking through the gates of a rather decrepit village. Maybe this was once a prosperous fishing village, but times have been hard, and you can see that a number of the people here look like they are underfed and not well cared for. Up on the hill overlooking the village, an enormous manor, probably once beautiful and resplendent, sits but the entire central section has been blown apart. Rubble still scatters across the nearby countryside. But you can see signs that there is rebuilding going on. A palisade wall has been constructed around the outer part of the village. New houses are being constructed, and you can see a team of earthbenders constructing stone scaffolds around the manor house and clearing away some of the rubble. In front of the manor are several large tents, the largest of which is painted with the Fire Nation sigil. And you have been directed, whether by guides or by talking to the local people, to make your way to this tent if you're interested in joining the cause, interested in serving as one of Kiyoshi's warriors. As you make your way up the pathway, you can see other hopefuls walking alongside you. Members of various nations with various skill sets, benders and non-benders alike. And as you make your way up towards the courtyard, you can see a tall woman dressed in red Fire Nation armor with dark black hair standing, looking over some reports, a scroll in her hand. And as she sees you approach, she winds the scroll up and smiles over towards you. A very tired, haggard smile, the dark rings under her eyes belying a, a fatigue and tiredness. Welcome. Um, please come and take a seat on the ground or... or um, sure there's some stools or something we can organize. Um, I'm Rangi. Uh, it's wonderful you could all make it. Please, tell me a little bit about yourselves. See if we can find something, something for you to do. And that is where we're going to jump into a little bit of an understanding of your characters. So to start off with, what we're going to do is go through each of you. And if you could describe basically say your character name, describe what they look like, and just give us like one or two lines about why your character might have come here to work with the Avatar. Now, a little bit of context for you. For almost, I think it was 15, 16 years, the world believed that a young man in the Earth Kingdom, Av uh, Yun, was the Avatar, the true Avatar, and he had been sent to Avatar Mansion to be trained. Then all of a sudden, Yun disappeared, and a new avatar was suddenly found. A woman aligned to a bandit group, Dao Fei, known as the Flying Opera Company, dressed in green robes with white face paint, more a spirit than a person, suddenly arrived by murdering the member of the Yellow Necks in a one-on-one -on -one combat, raising him up into the air in the avatar state and dropping him from hundreds of feet in the air. Ever since, she has been working very, very hard to root out the criminal element. Known equally for her judgment and her brutality, as well as her power, which seem to conflict with the messages that she's sending out asking for help. Not many people know much about Kiyoshi at this point. She's just 19 at this point. It's been a couple of years since the uh, since the announcement of her as the Avatar and since she defeated Avatar Yun. Um, who's had something to do with spirits. The popular knowledge that most people would know is that Avatar Yun, the false avatar, came back empowered by dark spirits and had to be put down, almost like a rabid dog. In fact, those of you who might know a little bit more, specifically those of you from the Earth Kingdom, would know that the ruins of this manor that you're standing in front of 
This is the ruins of, Avatar, of the Avatar Mansion, the Avatar Manor, and this is where Avatar Yun was killed. So probably Bree would be the only one to know that, given the offer actually from the Earth Kingdom. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit of context. If there's any extra context you would like, feel free to jump up and ask. Um, but we'll start with uh, Andrew. If you could please introduce your character and describe them a little bit to us, that would be amazing. Awesome. One sec. Uh, I need to just pull up my thing. I am a airbender. I very, very much uh, have uh, hair, like I just have like different colored robes. Still in the M nomad style, but just different colored, sort of moving away from the original colors. Have you even dyed them yourself? Like, are there still parts where it hasn't uh, properly been dyed, be, and so there's like little patches of orange that haven't been correctly dyed? There would dyed be or... pieces that, like, like, like gloves or something that would be. Um, the main shirt stuff I can just buy that normally, but like That's gloves true. and stuff, I would have dyed myself. Um, very much covering up my tattoos. I have hair, um, just to try to cover up my tattoos again. Um, I'm old. I don't know. We haven't really come up with an age. So you, when you described the character to me, it came across oh, as yeah. you were like late thirties, early forties. So I drew your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that seems that, yeah, okay. that seems about right. Cool. That, that works introducing me. yourself as old when you when you're late thirties, early forties is no, no, uh, no, is no, now no, insulting gonna... to me as a man yeah. who no, is no, in no. his thirties now. No, no. <laughs> When I said that, I was looking at uh, someone and be like, "I don't know how old we made our characters." Um, would you like to share? Um, would you like to share the description you gave me because you didn't give me any inspiration? Uh, art. Would you like yeah, to share yeah, the description yeah. that you gave me for your character portrait? One sec. Because uh, I think it's I think it is important that people understand what I had to deal with. Oh wait, no, that's not that's the wrong person. Andrew and Archie both really tested tested me with the character art. Bree, Bree and Brandon uh, gave me excellent resources. I was given yeah, inspiration. Yeah, they used what art. we said. They used AI. This yeah, they cheated. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, look, I have no problem with using AI uh, art yeah, yeah. in the concept <laughs> of getting across certain ideas that you want to see in a character so, art. I think that's fine. I've got no problems with that. One random day, just yep. on a random day, I went, my character looks like Jason Statham with hair. That's what I was given. That's it. That's all I was given. And Archie, and, uh, I mean, your description, what did you give me? <laughs> the Meg. John Cena. Without hair, is <laughs> what you told me. <laughs> so I've done my best. But yeah, so Andrew, um, and your character's name is Jed? Jed. Jed, okay. Uh, Bree, I can see your hand is raised. Sorry, real quick, is that why in the character art you're doing <laughs> That's why in the character art, he's got the hand in front of himself doing the you can't see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I realized I realized something very important. Um, I can't really draw John Cena's face. I did about 30 different versions of that head and face, and I just couldn't get it right. There's something about the perspective. I don't know what it is. I think John Cena doesn't have a face that I can draw for some, for some no, reason. It's it's not a memorable, it's a memorable face, but it's a very basic face as well. So, so I did my best, but I just, I couldn't get it sitting right. And like the tattoo didn't quite work. I and maybe he's got like a slightly odd head. So I did to make sure that Archie got the sense that it was John Cena and I'd fulfilled the brief that I was given. I did do the, you can't see me <laughs> hand as well. <laughs> so I hope, I hope that, I hope that fulfilled the brief for you, Archie. Uh, I love it. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, so, Andrew, why would Jed be answering Kiyoshi's call for help? Kiyoshi and Rangi's call for help. Uh, Actually, what you would know about Rangi, you would know that Rangi and Kiyoshi, rumours about them having some sort of ally or partnership going on. Um, and she is the Fire Nation assigned bodyguard of Avatar Yun. But she seems to be with Kiyoshi now. Yep. Um... I would be here uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, I'd be here to protect Jet. Uh, do hey, who are you here to protect? Sorry, Jet. Who's Jet? Oh, fuck. you mean Ted, Archie's character? Ted. Ted. Fuck. You forgot my <laughs> name already? No, I thought. No, no, no. I sorry. I read. I scrolled down you in the chat, man. and there was a multiple ones. I'm like Jet. Jet sounds right, but then they're like no. Ted, Ted makes sense, yeah. We're fully prepared for tonight, as you can tell. 
Oh yeah, we're call it, let's so call it. it. I'm, I'm also all here, guys. Don't worry about it. Andrew only woke uh, up half an hour ago, so. I'm not, haven't improved. It Tedwood since. and Jedwood, <laughs> that's their full names. <laughs> when you guys are crossed with each other. <laughs> that's fantastic, Jed I like that. What? Um, I would also be here because I feel like the Air Nation had betrayed the Avatar. Yeah, actually, that is, it's actually that's interesting you bring that up. So the Air Nation um, are probably the only nation that immediately accepted Kyoshi when she came to the Southern Air Temple and demonstrated that she could bend multiple elements. They immediately were like, "Oh yeah, Earth Earth Kingdom made a mistake. It happens. Um, what do you need?" And basically, were more than happy to to accept her straight away. They were the only nation that immediately accepted her without any kind of like pushback. Um, however. Yeah. In the process of finding the Avatar, a rogue air nomad known as Kelsang, who used to be an air nomad sage but was kicked out, stole a whole bunch of the Avatar relics, the toys, to help try and find the Avatar, right? Because the Earth Kingdom was struggling. They could not locate the Avatar. So they stole a whole bunch of, of toys that were, they weren't supposed to take away out of the air nomads and brought them to this village to try and locate the new Avatar. Now, Kiyoshi actually took one of those and broke it, a clay turtle, and that has never been recovered. Um, Kyoshi has promised that she will remake it, but at this point she hasn't actually done that yet. What? So maybe, maybe, maybe that's even if if you've been exiled from the Air Nomads, maybe you were one of the keepers who was supposed to keep these treasures and relics safe, and you failed. Kelsang yep. bypassed you easily. <laughs> to, just said, oh, "I just need to, I just need to look at these and and take them for a walk to get them some sunshine." And you're just like, "Yeah, that that checks out." We used to like have sunshine. parts all the time together. I trusted him. That's true. That. Yeah. Um, you would also know that Kelsang uh, vanished mysteriously, vanished, and Kyoshi reports that Jian Zhu, this rogue Earth sage, actually killed him. Would be the what everyone now knows. Mm. <gasps> yeah. But okay, that's maybe that's a good reason why you've been, uh, why you're not potentially working with the Air Nomads any further, and maybe a way for you to regain your position is to to return these artifacts, because okay. Kyoshi's brought most of them back, but the clay turtle she hasn't done so because she hasn't made it yet, <laughs> she hasn't remade it. Okay, that's pretty good. In the spirit of sticking around with Andrew's character, we probably also also should discuss his partner in crime, Ted. Um, Hi, my name's Ted. <laughs> yep. Um, Ted. <coughs> Jed Hello, is Ted. My, uh, Are you a Jed recovering is... airbender as well? Um, <laughs> so, Jed is my older brother. Um, however, um, he's not all there. He's not the smartest. He's not the sharpest tool in the Jed. Um, so... I have to, you know, look after him. Yeah. I, I, have to, I protect, he attack. Now you still wear the garbs, the garb of yes. the Air Nomads. You still have your head shaved. Do you follow yep. all the Air Nomad traditions? Are you still very much in high standing with the Air Nomads? Or is this Probably kind of like- Probably not all of them. Okay. Um, but still a few I'm still, I still abide by. Yeah, um, fair enough. But yeah, definitely not all of them. Okay. And um, are you, I guess I should ask you and Jed, do you know which temple you might have hailed from? The Southern? Okay. Done. Sure. Southern Air Temple. We can, that's that's nice and close. Night. I'll just double check that's not the uh, not the women's only one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> make, yeah make, make sure that real quick. I'm pretty I sure I think we not. Googled it. Bless you. It was, Excuse me, it turns out I'm allergic, to, uh, allergic to that question. Um... Yes, I'd say, yeah, 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 that's absolutely fine. So actually, this is even more perfect because Kelsang, that airbender I was telling you about, the one who ran off with the um, artifacts, he is also from the Southern Air Temple. So that fits perfectly with the law that we've just established. That's ideal. That was, um, yeah, I mean, it was planned from the start. Perfect. Oh, you guys, I'm so pleased that you've quickly read the book since we discussed it. I'm, I'm just telling you, right, I, I wrote Southern Air Temple here four months ago when we made our character. That's outstanding. Thank you very much. Meant um, to be. Any anything else about? Do you want to describe Ted's physicality to us a little bit? What are, no, what, John what is, Cena. <laughs> but can we can we have a little bit <laughs> you more? You sometimes can't see him when he goes like he, he, he like he just um, turns invisible randomly. And he's wearing sort of the traditional Air Nomad robes. Traditional robes. Yeah, um, bit of a goatee. Out. Little goatee. Um, I couldn't commit to the full 
full beard like uh like Jed. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted a little bit of a. Little Jed's got style. like the hunky stubble. I realize I made Jed, Jed very attractive in the artwork, and I made Ted yeah. not quite as attractive, <laughs> which is quite funny. Oh, meant to be. Meant to Perfect. Be. Uh, excellent. And, and so, so Ted, you're really there just to look after Jed. Is that is that correct? You're not here because of any uh, sense of kinship with the Avatar or any sense of responsibility to the world. It's literally just I have this. Not other really shit. any responsibility to to anything, to be honest. Um, right. More this so, be awesome. My brother is my brother. I go yep. look after him because uh, again, he's a bit ditzy. Yep. Uh, he needs his care around him sometimes to help him with um, basic uh, life situations. So you're the older brother, correct? And he's the younger. No, brother. I'm younger. You're no, the younger, younger brother. Okay, younger. cool. I thought so. Um, yep. Awesome. Okay, that checks out. Um, Kiko, I think we should talk to Brandon. Would you like to introduce your character? No. Oh. So my character is Kiko. He's early twenties, around there. No specific age, I thought of yet, but that sort of vibe. Fairly sort of slender, sort of build, um, or dark olive skin uh, from the Northern Water Tribe. Uh, clothes are pretty much just like your sort of Water Tribe sort of garb, but a little bit of like little wraps and like sort of nice little art patterns on his arms and such like that. Um, yeah, and dark brown hair tied up into a bun with the side shaved. It's about him. Fantastic. Um, I guess I guess the question is, so, so the Northern Water Tribe, so you've traveled quite a distance to get here. What would have brought Kiko yeah. away from his family, away from his friends, away from his responsibility to the Northern Water Tribe? Because it probably would be a bit easy to explain why you left the Southern Tribe if you were kind of tied up in that whole Fifth yeah. Nation issue. Um, you're already kind of not really that welcome back in the Southern Water Tribe straight away, but if there's a compelling reason why Kiko would have left the Northern Water Tribe, we can totally have you be from the North. Uh, it's Southern, yeah, because Southern's one that's gone for all the troubles, hasn't it? What so, you were saying before. so the Southern, the Southern Tribe has had a bit of an issue where a very charismatic leader rose through the ranks and basically yep. commandeered their military and turned it into a pirate nation that they called the Fifth Nation, and they basically yeah. ruled the seas Perfect. for quite a few years before. A, uh, an attempt to capture Avatar Yuen uh, resulted in some pretty impressive bending from Kiyoshi, uh, an earthbender who people thought wasn't particularly good at earthbending. Turns out she just couldn't bend small stuff. She can only do like mountains, <laughs> essentially, um, at that point. And so that, I mean, if you wanted to even be on the outskirts of that battle, this is what you would have seen, Kiko. You would have seen the trap be sprung, the icebergs being moved into position from your position right at the back, maybe as a new recruit to the fleet. Um, you would have seen an enormous pillar of stone rise from the earth and then a series of fire bending and earth bending being unleashed as the ships were destroyed by the uh, by this impressive earth bending. Well, works well because I was sort of thinking in my head, like kind of like a I think Jack from like Treasure Planet sort of deal like that. I was sort of picturing like like thieving on the street. I was using that, that sort of as feeling. inspiration for the character art as well. That's the vibe I was going oh, for. Hell the, yes. That's the smile. You'll notice that like I had a very specific kind of like a smirky smile. It's literally I had yep. Treasure Planet open as the inspiration for that. That's hilarious. Oh, yes. that's perfect. <laughs> like, oh my god, are we twinning? That's <laughs> that's, that's. I was I was just I was just picking up what you were putting down. It was uh, it was definitely the vibe I was getting. Hell yeah! So it would have been wanting to get out the Southern Water Tribe, like grew up sort of rough, tough, all that sort of stuff along there. But wants to get out. He's kind of looking for wealth and a gang. Is kind of where he's from here. Like, yeah. So sort of like, you know, a group of people, kind of what he's about. Yeah. Okay, and that makes sense, right? Because in the past. <laughs> sort of three years avatar kiyoshi has created this strike force in basing saying news of their effectiveness probably would have reached the southern water tribe and reached the the waters south of uh, south of the continent i mean you would have heard that kiyoshi is making waves she's changing things she is upending the natural order and she doesn't let anything stand in her way so what's the best way to deal with a wave a rogue wave that's coming towards you ride it ride the wave very water better, tribe even better yeah so you're you're here to kind of like join in and kind of get what you need from this relationship right like you're, you're here to further your own game further your own ambitions and basically riding kiyoshi's wake is what i'm hearing yeah that feels like fun i like that fantastic and finally we should talk about Bree's character Bree, would the you child. like to 
Okay. <laughs> Would you like to introduce your character, please? Sure. My character is Lily Hanna. Um, she is from the Earth Nation, and she is, surprise, surprise, not a bender. Um, second non-bender like character benders, that I've played. Do I don't, I feel like I don't have the creativity to come up with all the things that they do. And I was just kind of interested in, because I'd played weapons specialist, I was interested in the flip side of that with things that I could build myself. Yeah. So you've actually gone tech um, specialist, which was a class that we didn't have any representation of in uh, Embers of War. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to see the Tech Specialist in action. I actually I, don't, I actually haven't seen the Tech Specialist in action in any other games either. Yeah, so this will be really cool. This will be lots mm -hmm. of fun. Do you want to describe mm -hmm. Lily to us a little bit? What does she look like? She is somewhere between 8 and 10. Oh she Christ. doesn't even know her real age. She's actually a child. I, she I is a child. She's a child. She's genuinely a child. I was kind of trying to draw her as like she was 12, but... Um... Well, her age is not really determined. She's never had a real home. She hasn't known her family for as long as she can remember. So she doesn't yep. actually know her own age, but she's very small in build and quite short. So she passes herself off as probably younger than what she is. Um, yeah. She's been telling people that she's eight for the past five years, kind of thing. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And she doesn't actually know how old she is. Yeah. Um, so she has short brown hair. Um, she normally wears it in a half up, half down because it doesn't all go up into a bun. Um, has the cute little bun that um, is pretty common in the Earth Nation. Um, cute little button nose. Uh, and her fighting style is bombs and traps. Bombs and traps, which sounds like a really sick beat to lay down. Bombs and traps and bombs and yeah, traps. Yeah, boy. Sick. Um, um, nice. Okay, that's really exciting. I think this is yeah, going to be lots so of fun. She doesn't really have a home that she's come from, and I would say that she's probably come to this area less so from the call to arms that's been put out and more so to scavenge and steal anything precious that she can find. So I'm going to make one little addition to what I said mm -hmm. before. Kiyoshi actually grew up on the streets as well. She was abandoned as a child by her parents in mm -hmm. Yokoya village and was kind of left to fend for herself until Kelsang, that rogue airbender, um, when she went for the avatar testing and, and stole the turtle toy. He kind of took her under his wing and got her a job in the Avatar Mansion, cleaning up after Avatar Yun. Ever since then, Kiyoshi has had a real soft spot for the children put through a similar thing to her. So I'm actually going to say, Brie, that in addition to the call for warriors, Kiyoshi's also offering a roof and food for those who are for the children who are living on the streets, somewhere safe, outside the walls of Ba Sing Se, where it's too easy for them to go missing, to be exploited, to be taken. Somewhere yep. safe. Maybe that's what's brought Lily to Kiyoshi. Oh, definitely. Like, um, Lily's main motivation in life is to survive at this yeah. point. She cons people into taking her in and looking after her, and then she steals all their valuables and bombs their house and leaves. So she's partly on the run and probably isn't welcome back in Ba Sing Se, to be honest. So she's probably just looking for asylum somewhere um, where she will feel safe and be able to stay in one place for a little while. It's actually perfect timing. Since the Earth King took over Kyoshi's task force, task force and called them the Anti-Corruption Task Force, he's been using them to clear out slums. He's been using them to clear out the undesirables from the city, everyone associated oh. with the Dao Fei or anyone who he doesn't see as worthy of living in Ba Sing Se. They've become this almost militant police style thing. In a way, this is kind of the precursor to the Dai Li. I am very undesirable. So, so it's, yeah, that, it's that quite works. possible you've almost <laughs> been driven out of Ba Sing Se. Like, most likely, yeah. Because while Kiyoshi was in charge, this task force was only to deal with the most violent criminals. But since she was called away to deal with problems in the Fire Nation and um, uh, issues in the Southern Water Tribe, the Earth King just went, great. Thanks for making me a task force to control my political rivals. <laughs> Sick. And took control of it, basically, overnight. Yeah. Um, which is why, and Rangi was supposed to stay behind him and sort of prevent this from happening. She was unable to. So then she 
to leave Basing Se to try and find Kyoshi. And by the time they both got back, it was done. Like the, the people they'd put in charge had been replaced. The task force now belonged to the Earth King. And that's what's driven Rangi and Kyoshi out of Basing Se. They've left disillusioned, disappointed, and and feeling kind of betrayed. All the hard work they did to, to fix and help Basing Se just was undone in a single night by the corrupt leaders of the of the current kingdom. And that's what's kind of moved Kiyoshi to start rebuilding Yokoya Village and Avatar Mansion. So that's that fits really, really that nicely. Works. That fits really nicely. Brilliant. As each of you kind of takes a seat and you introduce yourselves to Rangi, um, she smiles and nods at each of you. Well, um, it's fantastic that you've all come. Some of you from very far away. Uh, obviously, we can always use skilled benders. Uh, we don't have many airbenders joining our ranks. Uh, Jed and Ted, it's, it's um, I mean, not to be rude, but it's a bit of a surprise. Normally the air nomads keep themselves away from and above such such things. But if you are willing and, and looking to make a real difference to the world and help restore the balance that has been lost for so long, you will not be turned away. Uh, Kyoshi will be very pleased to have your assistance. And airbending is still an area in which... Um, in which the Avatar could use some refinement. Uh, potentially, if there's a chance later on, perhaps you could, uh, if you have any special techniques or skills, you could help demonstrate those to her in a way that would um, would help improve the Avatar's chance of, uh, of winning in combat using airbending. All right. Uh, yeah, no, go, please. Please. Um, yes, it may be a bit unorthodox, but happy to be here. Um, we we will be keeping an eye on things here as well. Brilliant. Bree, what were you going to ask? Um, I just want to say I don't introduce myself as Lily. I introduce oh. myself as Poppy. Poppy. Okay, brilliant. This isn't going to get confusing at all because <laughs> I'm going to have to remember it characters. It will change every time I introduce myself oh, to someone. I have to have characters, know. certain NPCs remember oh, you by okay. certain names. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? This isn't fair. Because I'm a con artist. What do you mean? Yeah, that's fair. Um... <laughs> Awesome. This is the perfect time to actually go through and each of you uh, tell me a little bit about your... I, I, I was going to do playbooks, but this is a perfect segue. Like when she was saying like, oh, Airbenders, you can teach Kiyoshi some special moves and techniques. This actually flows really nicely into if you've picked any special techniques. Now, each of you can pick one. You can basically have a free level up at the beginning of the campaign and pick a brand new move. So each of you can start with one special move straight out the straight out the gates, straight off the bat. Um, we don't have to go through exactly what it is tonight. And if you come up with something that sounds really cool and it doesn't exist yet, I will obviously make it as a homebrew move. Um, there's a there's a couple that we've done and uh, uploaded to Beyond Legend uh, previously. We did those special spirit bending techniques, which were lots of fun. So I guess the question then is, uh, have each of you kind of had a bit of a, a think about if, you, if you'd like to have any special bending techniques? Are there any certain things that you'd like to kind of focus on? Or is that a better question to kind of look at next time? And maybe we should start with the... Um, are you trying to indicate you've got a sock puppet? Or what is going on, Archie? <laughs> yeah, I want more puppets. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, what was it? Have you got a question? Uh, I have a move I would like to think about. What's the move about. you'd like to think about? Slash well, talk about. Because my whole thing is is protect. Protect. Um, like an air shield. Yeah. Like, a force, like an air force field thingy. I like that a lot. Do you want me to quickly see if there's anything similar that already that exists? exists. So I, just, I just thought about that just then. Let me have a quick look and see if there's anything that exists that might be useful. Air cushion you kind of sounds what you're after. Wall in this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, air cushion sounds pretty close to what you're after. It's an evade and observe technique. Soften the blows an ally takes and get them back on their feet much faster. Mark one fatigue cool. to clear two fatigue, one condition or any one status from an ally within reach who was struck by an attack this exchange. So basically it's a way for you to heal someone by getting them back on their feet. Yeah, sounds good. All right, you may take air cushion then. Uh, air breathe. cushion. Um, I was going to say it would be kind of funny if Archie had some kind of move similar to Blur from D&D. We could do something with that. Um, so what? Uh, Andrew looks really confused. So Blur in oh, D&D. I, I didn't, I, yeah, I was oh, really confused. The spell, the spell, spell Blur, not the person Blur. The spell, yeah, I was like, the <laughs> yeah. what? The spell, yeah, okay, yeah, the Blur. Where, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. like where you basically create like a mirage of yourself yeah. and you can't see me. Ha ha ha. Oh, oh yeah. Funny. <laughs> That is, that a, is that a joke? <laughs> it is. It's a joke yeah. on John Cena, mate. Yeah. Who? 
it's embarrassing. Um, I'm happy for you to take air cushion, or if you want to take some sort of like, um, I guess this would be an evade and observe where you like vanish into a, like a cloud of steam or something. We can call it you can't see me and I will make that as a custom move. Or maybe yes, you can have that, that as your level up. It doesn't have to be right now. You can take air cushion to start with and get that later on as a level up. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks then. Okay, so you take air cushion now and you can't yeah. see me later. Yeah. I need to make a note, so I definitely make it, you can't see me, and then we can have it as a special one. Thanks, Dan. That's okay. <laughs> uh, custom airbender move. Make a note so I don't forget to do this. All oh, right. I'll never, I'll, never, I'll never answer to that ever again. <laughs> You're dead like six times in a row. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's too much to keep track of. I'm trying to, trying to keep track of a lot of different moving parts. Um, it's, it's become natural. <laughs> not a fan. But I also realized the more I call it out, the more you do it. So there's really no win for me here. Like this, there's no, there's no scenario where I get out of this in any way on top. We just need you to what? get all of his other D and D streamers to start. Yeah. Him him bad. Please, please don't. Um, I'll hit them all up. Andrew. Do you have an idea about any special moves that Jed would like to take? Uh, yes, I think I already picked one. Oh, you legend. Yeah. Look at this. He's actually prepared. Um, I think Genuinely it was Thundering forward. Gust. Oh, okay. Let me have a quick peek -a I think I remember this one. Are these practiced or mastered moves? Uh, these are mastered moves. You have these. Okay. You've, you've, you've got these moves. You've been using them for a while. Now, did we, start, we already start off with one, right? And then we yep. get, this is the second one? Yep, yes. Cool. Thundering Gust, you can cool. absolutely have. Uh, that's an advance cool. and attack technique. Jab at the air around you to send it hurtling forward at incredible speed, catching even the heaviest foes and tossing them aside. Mark two fatigue and inflict three fatigue on any foes in the path of your gust. <laughs> that's outstanding. Um, Keep reading. Those foes must mark an additional two fatigue or be flung backward and away, either into a wall and becoming stunned or far from the fight, depending on your surroundings. Are you trying to do... Is this basically so that when we come across Chin Village, you can <laughs> eat them off the side? Is that what this is about? No, no, no. This is this is like the, mess, the most aggressive one without getting too, like, murdery. It's force push. Yeah. It's force push. Force push. Yeah. yeah. Um, you may absolutely add that as a mastered technique to your character sheet. Uh, Bree, statistically, you're more likely to be slightly more prepared than uh, Brandon. No offense, Brandon. Um, I'm reading. That's good. I know. I can see you reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> did you have any idea about any special moves that you would like to take? Yes. So as I was going through the fighting techniques, I found two that work really well for me. So typically my character sheet comes with one called Sweep the Leg, which doesn't really suit my fighting style. So I've swapped that out for another one and then put in a second one, if that's okay. Yeah. So what what have you swapped? So you've taken Sweep the Leg. What have you swapped it in for? So I've take, taken that out and put in Plant Trap. Yeah. which is where yeah. you place a snare or triggered explosion in your environment because that just suits the character's backstory 100%. It's also pretty good. Um, mark one fatigue. The next enemy who enters the trapped area must mark a condition and shift their balance away from center. Yep. It's brutal. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second one that I was going to take is smoke bomb. Yeah. Because that also suits... I have bombs. It's the two I, I was going to recommend to you. Everything I do is traps and bombs. So these are just the two that I was like, these are perfect. I'll it's just funny. take those. I was going to recommend Smoke Bomb or Stink Bomb. They were the two that I was even going to yeah, recommend. Yeah, I, I really considered Stink Bomb, um, but I like to think that Lily has a little bit more class than that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so Smoke Bomb, throw a Smoke Bomb to cover your escape from combat. Mark one fatigue to immediately impair every other combatant in the area. You escape at the end of this exchange. Any foe who is engaged with you and not impaired may mark one fatigue to block your escape. It's basically when Lily doesn't want to fight because she's a child, <laughs> she can get out of dodge pretty quickly. Um, it also impairs you guys, just so you know. Yeah. It is every combatant, so it is against party as well. So I can use that just to piss you guys off as well, which is kind of fun. I expect nothing less. <laughs> it's outstanding. Very good. Brandon. Oh, we've got, we've had a suggestion I quite like. A nickname for Bree's character, the Biddy Bandit. <laughs> yes. So this is something I haven't said yet, and I was going to introduce this in session one, but a number of the Dao Fei take on kind of like nom de plumes. They take on kind of like nicknames. And so two of the characters you're going to meet, one of them has a nickname called the Flitting Sparrow Keat. And it's very normal for people to take kind of crazy, fun names that they use in this in these circles it's part of the the oaths and the uh the um the, the character they create for themselves um 
if you wanted to take the Biddy Bandit as your Dalfe name, that's pretty hilarious. Absolutely. That yeah, is nice. great. <laughs> Done. Locked in. Because she's um, so tiny. She's she an itty bitty bandit. She is. She's very small. I actually, I, it was a bit of a challenge drawing a child. I realized I have never drawn a child before. For character you just make for their any... face smaller and their eyes bigger. Well, I just made the face bigger proportionally to the body. So for me, it was all about oh, like yeah. mucking up the proportions. So like, yeah, I they shrunk... look like chopper chops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Biddy is ruined for anyone who's watched Little Rip. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I haven't seen it, so that's Bit, good with me. Bit, oh no. Bitty. 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 Um, Brandon, have you had a bit of a chance to look through some of the Water Tribe moves, some of the water bending moves? Um, I was going to say yeah, one that I thought so might was... be quite good for you was Creeping Ice. I was looking at Creeping Ice. Ooh. I thought that would be very good. I think we're like in tune today from what I'm thinking about my character. So I was looking at Creeping Ice or I was looking at Stream the... Uh, not Stream the Water. It was... Um, what's the name? Flower's Str- Water was another ah. one. But That's I was like, quick. I've kind of got Flower's Slippery water. Eel. Oh, here, yeah. Which kind of does a similar thing. So I'm like, I don't know if I... If that's redundant, if I pick that up as well. No, this is this is a cool move. Flow as water. Use a jet of water to propel you smoothly around obstacles. Mark one fatigue and move to a new location. If you engage or disengage with a foe, they are impaired. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Yeah. I also thought, um, let me have a quick look at stream the water, because that might also be pretty good. That's also a pretty, pretty good move. Push a high-powered stream of water yeah, from like- a significant source. Yeah, mark one fatigue to inflict a condition. Uh, they're pinned against something and cannot shift positions or engage foes other than you until they break the stream or you drop it. Mark one fatigue at the end of each exchange to continue the stream. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Keep it. You basically just have one hand up Iron Man blasting someone with water against a wall. That's pretty good too, actually. But I like it's, that. it's some that's hard pretty- choices. Otherwise, so water, water whip's a classic. Mark one fatigue to inflict a condition or two fatigue. Like, just a classic whoosh, water whip. It's is super classic. It's just, it's just classic. Because I'm like, oh, like, this, the little dipping around sort of thing, so I can dip out somewhere and impair yep. some dude, or I'm in trouble, I can just dash out trouble and whatnot. Did you but want to do ice like, slide like, instead? Ice cool. Did you want to do ice slide instead of flowing water? So ice slide's pretty similar. Choose an ice slide or create an ice slide around you to shift and redirect your foes. Mark one fatigue. For any foes engaged with you who choose advance and attack or defend and maneuver this exchange, you may shift their position, engaging or disengaging with them as appropriate. Each of these foes may mark a condition or two fatigue to resist this movement. So basically, if anyone tries to attack you or defend and maneuver around you, you can use this sort of like flowing ice that you create to ice skate around them and disrupt their ability to uh, to attack you. Instead, they'll be forced to attack someone else. It's not bad, is it? Not too bad. Let's lock this one in for now. If I change my mind later on, you'll be getting that's a fine. message on Messenger no, at some point. But let's do that. Fine. That sounds fun. That, yeah, that's pretty good, actually. All right, brilliant. Okay, so we've got each of your special moves. Massive fan of that. Let's do your playbooks and talk through a little bit about what your uh, special playbook abilities are because this is where some really cool, spicy stuff comes in. So each of you, you're all playing... Uh, playbooks that we haven't actually seen before, if I remember correctly. So we've got, yeah, these are all brand new ones. Two of you have picked the same playbook. So I will offer a chance if one of you would prefer a different one or if we want to stick with both, that's absolutely fine. So let's let's it's start me. with, it, it wasn't you. So Jed and Ted, you've both picked different ones. So we, in the spirit of uh, of going with, uh, yeah, with Jedward, um, Jed, would you like to take us through your playbook that you've picked? I have little memory of what I picked, but I picked the razor. (laughs) Tell us about the razor. Uh, Yes. Uh, We're going to hear. So, what's your balance? Let's let's go first. What's your balance between? So, as as the razor, your balance is between. So I, I'll need to talk to you about this afterwards because I think there's some the wording confuses me, but okay. control and connection. Yes, that's right. So now, I think I start away from center. Oh, okay. Let's have a bit I'm of just a look. not sure how far away. I think it is meant to be on plus one, but that's towards the uh, control. That would make sense if you were 
if you were on pl so did you did you pick the direction or did it recommend a direction uh it told me a direction oh uh, okay oh no you're, you're sorry your balance begins at begins play at plus two control sorry plus two control okay so there you go so you actually start off balance basically. yeah look it's it, it, it might not seem great but i get lots of benefits benefits for that that's I get, true I, I get pluses to rolls and stuff so it's all good is this i think this uh, is one of the new ones uh the razor yes, yes it is it's from one shi tong's adventure guide which i have right here <laughs> oh the automatic thing gets rid of it doesn't it if i keep my face in does it stay there we go um so i've actually i can even i can even do this with the book which is really nice um Open I, uh, I certainly didn't have the book open really quickly so that I could brush up on some of the aspects of the uh, of the law really quickly. So the razor is hardened, sharp, guilty, and regretful, forged into a dangerous weapon by your masters. Okay, this is going to be interesting. So yeah, you start. Um, yeah, you start. Okay, so you start on control. You start off. Uh, yeah, wow. So you start. Yeah, you start out of out of balance. Adabouts. You get yep. some. You get some interesting, uh, interesting moves as well. Do you want to take us through the moves that you've picked? Okay, so I took uh, Mind of Steel. Yep. Uh, when you advance, attack, or evade, and observe with fewer conditions marked uh, than your highest principle, uh, you can roll with focus instead of the normal stat. Nice. Very nice. So that that's. I think if I have like fewer conditions than my balance, yeah. That's what that um, means. So yeah, pretty much. The principles is a little bit different. Um, let me just quickly pull open the principles because it's uh, it's been a hot minute since we uh, since we played Avatar, and I've got to quickly remind yeah, myself on what, the way things are called. Is, yeah. Every, yeah, everything's got different names. So let me quickly pull open principles uh, while I do that. Do you want to take us through your other move while I do that? Uh, I just took air cutting edge uh, plus one to focus. I nice just decided easy. to do a focus build. And you've got a special move here that I can see called making amends. Do you want to take us through that? That it's a lot of words. So oh no no. In that, in that case, in that case, then let's just go through the once per session ability. What's your special ability? Uh, where? So the once per session bit, where it says just uh, once per session. Uh, when you have tried your best to prove that you are a different per, uh, you are a different, better person now through your actions. Roll taking a plus one for each yes uh, for the following questions. Did you make amends uh, directly to a person you harmed? Are you at center? That will never be a yes. Did someone honestly thank you for your efforts and forgive you for your mistakes? Nice. Uh, then on hit for a... On a seven to nine, choose one. Uh, then I get different bonuses. Uh, two uh, plus ten, I get two. I get to clear a condition, shift your balance towards uh, connection, mark growth. Very nice. So that's that's pretty nice. I think that'll be uh, that'll be interesting to kind of play around with. Looking forward to that. Yep. Um, so um, yeah, so so the principles are your balance. So essentially, if you're so your your kind of ability works when you're not at center, which is really in conflict to your making amends. So your mind of steel is going to be better the closer you are to one of your principles, in this case, yes. control or connection. But your making amends works better, only really works properly when you're at balance. So it's yes. it's it really tries, interesting. It tries to keep me from falling off the edge, but keeps yeah. me like just not too far from the center. Yeah, I, I like this a lot. This will be a lot of fun. Archie, would you like to take us through your playbook? Hello, my name is Ted. No, no, we've done that bit. <laughs> Ted. What, Ted. Tell us about your balance. So, so, so what playbook are you playing? <clears throat> the Prodigy. The Prodigy. You, you aren't are... just cap capable yep. in your area of skill and training. You're astonishing. <laughs> A true prodigy excelling and learning far more quickly than anyone would expect. You start play with one additional master. Oh, I didn't read that. So you haven't one additional <laughs> master technique. So you haven't mastered. You haven't added yourself an extra master technique. It sounds like. Oh. Would you like to go through and do that? Before you do, though, can you take us through your balance? So your balance. You're torn between two principles. What are those two principles? Uh, blackfish and whitefish. I know. What, what are the names of them? Uh, excellence <laughs> and. I called koi. Community. Twee and La was the correct answer. That's the name of the black fish and the white fish. But community and excellence is indeed the name of your principles. Um, very nice. And you are starting at center because you've not taken a playbook that changes that. 
you yep. also have the two moves. Would you like to take us through your two playbook moves? Uh, yes, I took an open mind. Um, it just means that I can learn three techniques from other skills and trainings as long as I have a teacher. Uh, and I take a plus one on the training move. Uh, and the other one is challenge. I can throw a boastful challenge at an opponent before a fight and roll with passion on a hit. If I win the fight, I can choose one from the below. Uh, I can teach a technique um, to somebody that already know that I already know. Uh, I can give an ans give you answers or an item of your choice. Acknowledge your superiority. So, no, no, this, this is something an opponent has to do for you if you win. Your opponent yeah. has to teach you a technique, give you answers or an item. Acknowledge your superiority, <laughs> which shifts your balance. My side. <laughs> take your side in a future conflict that's really good that's a really really nice yeah. playbook um pretty cool has oh. brandon's camera died this yeah is, battery's gone out this is premature even for brandon's camera we've not been going for two hours brandon have you not charged your camera um, yeah, um also i learned just then um with uh me, me and jed work very well together yes because my growth question is did you express gratitude to a companion for their <laughs> present support or teaching which works Perfect. very well for his um that's his uh mood. that's ideal actually that's uh that's brilliant uh, i mean that was meant to be meant to be i'll also need to talk to you afterwards because i've got more stuff that i just don't understand that's okay we, we can we can go through that afterwards this is not a problem um let's jump to brie would you like to take us through your playbook okay my playbook is the rogue so my balance is between survival and friendship, which makes sense because I've been on the run my whole life. Yep. Um, so my moves, my playbook moves are, is that the best you got? Which is nice. when you goad or provoke an NPC into foolhardy action, I get to say what I want them to do and roll with passion. On a 10 plus, they do it. On a seven to nine, they choose to either do it, but more intensely than expected. So I'm taken off guard. They do it more carefully than expected. So they gain advantage against me. They don't do it, but they do embarrass themselves and mark a condition. Or they don't do it, but only catch themselves at the very last minute. So they stumble and give me an opportunity. That's outstanding. On a miss, I am provoked to take harsh action. Or they are provoked to take harsh action directly against me in a way that I am not prepared to counter. Oh, very nice. That um, is cool. And... My second one is casing the joint, which again, makes so much sense for me. Um, when you assess a situation, I add these questions to the list. You may always ask one question from these options, even on a miss. What is here most valuable or interesting to me? Who or what is most vulnerable to me? Who here is in control, wealthiest, or has the most power? That's going to come in a lot of handy, that question. That is oh, very, yeah. that's going to be very, very helpful for a campaign set in Kiyoshi Zero. <laughs> that's yep. a really good, uh, really good move. Yep. And uh, take us through your uh, your bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> so my special ability is bad habits. It says I've picked up some bad habits over the years. Most other people are pretty set on trying to get me to stop, but maybe I can bring some friends along for the ride. So I chose four bad habits. They are casual, thievery and pickpocketing, trespassing, makes sense, yep. uh, charming insults of dangerous people, and con. Nice. So any necessary skills or talents related to your bad habits are considered to be part of your background. So it all just makes sense for me. That's, that's um, outstanding. When I indulge a bad habit on my own, I shift my balance towards survival and roll with survival. On a hit, you pull it off, vent your frustrations, clear fatigue or conditions equal to your survival. If you have no fatigue or conditions, you mark a growth point. Wow. Holy shit. So Damn. I can potentially level myself up pretty by being quickly an asshole. <laughs> just by stealing things and trespassing and calling people poopy heads. That's outstanding. Um, on a 10 plus, you also gain a windfall, a boon or opportunity. Your bad habits really paid off this time. Um, so that's up to your discretion as the GM. On a miss, I'm caught by someone dangerous or powerful and they really complicate my life. If I can they convince will. someone, yeah. <laughs> if I can convince someone to help me indulge in this bad habit, I shift my balance towards friendship. Roll with friendship. On a hit, you and your friend pull it off and grow closer. Each of you makes the other inspired. On a ten plus, you also obtain some useful resource or information and become prepared. 
On a miss, something goes terribly awry. You can either take the heat yourself or shift your balance towards survival and you leave your friend in the lurch. That could be fun too, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty My good. growth question is, did you get a friend to join in or approve of one of your bad habits? And I feel like with these guys, that's going to be so easy. They're never going to tell me not all to of press them. pass. Suckers. Us? It's going to be all of them. <laughs> Us telling you off. No. I know. It's going to be so easy. <laughs> Brandon, Kiko, you also picked the rogue. Now, ah. while and, and I can also see you've picked a number of the same things. You also picked casing the joint. And you've also picked yep. pretty much the same bad habits as oh, really? Bree did. You picked vandalism oh, or sabotage, trespassing, one. cons, and gambling. Aren't, aren't two of them the same? Yep. Trespassing and cons. Guard guard so well. So uh, if, if you wanted to really stick good. with the rogue, you absolutely can. But after, we had a, after we'd sort of talked through your backstory, I had a quick peek at another one that I think you also might quite like called the pillar, which is where you've come from a maybe a team either working with or, or leading a larger team, you know how to work with a group, but you don't want to, I mean, it's hard to not take charge sometimes. So your principles are support and leadership. Your special move is that you're a squad leader or your special ability is that you're a squad leader. And so you have these styles of leadership, which you can pick, and then they kind of choose how you interact with the group. And then there's a couple of moves I thought sounded like you'd be interested. One of them is called out of uniform. When you put on a disguised or, or physically altered persona to fool a community into thinking you're two different people, roll with creativity. On a hit, most people, who, sorry, people who are mostly unfamiliar with you won't connect your two personas. So basically you end up with like a, an extra persona that you can use whenever you need to. Um, and the other one I thought you might quite like as well is called taking care of business. <laughs> when you lose your balance in a battle, instead of choosing one of the normal options, you may instead sacrifice yourself for your companions. If you do, your companions have a chance to get away without issue and you are taken out and possibly captured. You also choose to either leave a clue for your companions, throw your companions a vulnerable object, or provoke an opponent shifting their balance twice. If you wanted to. Otherwise, if you wanted to stick with Rogue, please stick with Rogue. I just thought, given given the background, uh, this one also seemed like a pretty good option, the icon. And it's, it's one we've also not played with uh, before either. Uh, excuse me. Um, I Hello. would just like to point out that the pillar. Sorry, uh, not the icon. The pillar. Brandon and I also picked the exact same playbook originally in the first yeah. campaign. We were both yeah. the guardian. <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like we're, we're just, just the same just person. Always, just, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have longer hair, though. Like, right, please, <laughs> please feel free. Please feel free to stick with uh, with the rogue if you want, Brandon. No, no pressure. Like, obviously, there's no issues with having the same no, playbooks. There's not a problem. We can get away with so much together. Yeah. Oh yeah, you two will get your growth questions all the time. You two will just be like, "Yes, let's do this." That was my immediate thought. Was like, oh, I'm just gonna go break into somewhere and just steal some shit. You want to come with? Yeah. <laughs> It'll always be the indulging bad habit with a friend. But which one of us leaves the friend in the lurch when we fail? <laughs> no, no, you both do, and it's really awkward. <laughs> we've uh, we've had a quick question from so chat, which I wanna stay. I wanna touch on, which is Chin Village won't be this campaign, will it? Um, it won't be. Archie has just lied to the community. Chin Village doesn't exist yet. Kyoshi we'll Island, we'll so Kyoshi Island doesn't exist yet. Chin, Chin the Conqueror hasn't even really joined the ranks of the military yet. That happens we'll a lot later Chin. on. We'll it happens a lot Chin. later on in Kyoshi. Oh, that's going to be the trigger. Like you like attacking him and mugging him in the street is what causes him to launch <laughs> his like campaign of terror across we'll the Earth Kingdom. Him and leave. Un unfortunately, at this point in time, Kyoshi is sort of like 19, 20, like it's it's very early on in her avatar range she's only been announced as the avatar for three years at this point it's not been very long at all um so this is taking place sort of like two or three years after the shadow of kiyoshi so uh chin the conqueror doesn't exist yet chin, i mean he obviously does but he's not chin the conqueror he's just old mate chin i guess young mate chin young chin he's young chin like chin how we junior. had young jed chin junior <laughs> chin, chin junior Grimson chin um yeah, and yeah, Kyoshi yeah. lives to 280 years old. So there's a lot of pure, Kyo the Kyoshi era. There's a lot that happens. <laughs> Did you just say Neck Village as an alternative <laughs> place to go burn down? <laughs> Do you know what the annoying thing is? There's a Dao Fei group called the Yellow Necks. <laughs> I call that because they wear yeah. yellow scarves. <laughs> they might call their hideout 
yellow neck hideout or yellow neck redoubt, and that would work technically with neck village. All right, there we <laughs> go. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Really annoying that you're actually spot on with the law there. Um, and I can't. I've, I've read all number. the books. What are you talking no, about? you haven't. I know for a fact you haven't. <laughs> I know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brandon, would you like to take us through the extra move that uh, you've taken? So you've taken one different move to Bree in the rope. Would you like to take us through Slippery yes. Eel Hound? Eel Hound. This may yeah. change soon because I'm kind of vibing with the whole pillar thing. Did you read through and you kind of like it? Like, yeah, like just what you were saying, I've got to read for it later on, but I'm like, I'm liking that vibe. I'm liking that idea of like two different people you can like swap into. Like, which like still works with what Bree's stuff. doing. It still fits still in really nicely. And yeah. Feel things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that stuff. Like, not off the cards or anything. So, <laughs> but I'll read through this. So, this is a slippery eel hound. When you defend a maneuver and choose to seize position to escape the scene, foes must mark an additional two fatigue to stop you, and you may bring any allies with reach uh, when you retreat. That so that combined like, with the one, smoke bomb. Yeah. Mm, I was really tempted to take that one, but I was thinking more about like backstory. So I was like, oh, I'll take that one when I grow. Fair. Facing Fair. the giant was the one that's a clear snap pick. Yes, every day. Yeah, <laughs> it's excellent. Given given how so much good. of the given how much of the campaign in Embers of War was, what what do I see? I think that fits really nicely. Casing the joint works really really nicely. Um, brilliant. Okay. That, I think, is a really good summary of each of your characters. Uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to touch on? Yes, Archie. Uh, hey, Dad. Um, so, growth questions. Hello. Are we going to start doing that at the end of every session now? No, we're going to stick with our original plan <laughs> because it worked really well. Um, we will be doing it more frequently during this campaign. Um the current plan for uh, the Legacy of Kyoshi is to have it be a slightly shorter campaign than Embers of War. This is kind of like an Only interlude. Only 59 episodes. <laughs> it's kind of like an interlude <laughs> between our main uh, series, which is the the um, prelude to the Hundred Year War, basically. Um, book two won't, won't be starting until we finish the Legacy of Kyoshi. This is going to be our kind of like interim series. We are going to be bringing in guests. You'll notice below me on the overlay, there's a spot for a guest character. The plan is to have people come in as guests for a session or two, uh, maybe even pick up another cast member as time goes on and have them join us uh, join us full time, which would be really cool. But um, Imagine picking up a guest full time. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, plan, the plan is to have this be a slightly shorter series. So you will be getting your growth questions more often. The only reason we're not going to do um, them at the end of every session, which is a bit different to how it's in the rule books, the reason we're doing it that way is so that it's more likely you all level up together uh, and kind of keep you all at a similar level it's almost like the equivalent of milestone uh leveling in DD as opposed to experience leveling in DD. i've got nothing against experience leveling in DD, but i do really like the milestone leveling because it encourages people to a work as a team and b approach problems not just thinking about what the maximum number they're going to get out of it is and because avatar legends is so beautifully set up for creative and collaborative role play I feel like it fits really nicely rather than having a series of questions that you're just going to try and answer every single session that kind of goes to the back of your mind and you're in the here and now enjoying the moment engaging with the characters and working as a team it's good to have an, an eye on those questions because they kind of help guide role play a little bit as well but i really want it to be what comes naturally to you as you're playing your characters which is why i do really like this kind of milestone equivalent version is my is my justification so if you also want to do that as a, as a dm or gm for avatar legends i think it's a, a really good system it worked really well for embers of war um and because it's because avatar legends is not as mathematically primed as DD is it's a lot easier to balance stuff to every encounter i was balancing stuff on the fly most of the time uh, andrew thank you dad and because we're all really silly and goofy uh we don't remember what our abilities do no. So just getting new abilities every session is just like, what are we doing? Yeah. Uh, like yeah. We, it gave us time to l work with what we had and learn. Yeah. And, and also to, to use them, right? Like to showcase them for those of you who might be watching because you've not played Avatar before, uh, Avatar Legends before, this is a really good way to showcase it. So um, if this is your first time playing, we do a much deeper dive into the understanding of the rules and how it all works in our uh, first playthrough, the, the book one, Embers of War. However, I should say some things have changed very slightly because we were originally working on the quick start guide, which um, 
was then replaced about halfway through the campaign with the full version. So there, there'll be some things that we do a little bit differently. I mean, it would kind of be perfect if we got someone on as a guest straight away who's never played with the system before, so we can kind of introduce it in session one and talk through some of the things. But uh, I'll see how we go with that. Alrighty. I think they're the main things I wanted to touch on, which is perfect timing, because Archie, you need to run away in 10 minutes, correct? Uh, affirmative. Affirmative, okay. <laughs> so what I think we'll do now then is do a little bit more of the roleplay really quickly, just to kind of give you guys a bit of the narrative story and center you with your first task and give you a bit of an idea about some things to take away as you, as you head off into the evening. And then uh, Archie will quickly record your uh, intro probably next week uh, and we'll do the others at the end of this session because we'll stick around a little bit longer so maybe Ted can go off and like maybe find somewhere safe to, to put your Sky Bison Ted and Jed um, to keep your Sky Bison Sky safe. Bison well, what's uh, that Sky Bison's name? Oh, I Ned, think we had one it's a good thing You're, Ned, Ned, let's Ned, let's, uh, let's quickly let's quickly <laughs> let's quickly revise that um, you don't have a Sky Bison as your Sky Bison you have a Sky Bison that has transported you here along with an airbender who is currently riding it we named him Ned though we named that's fine Ned. I've got no problems with that at all Right, you, you want to waste the name Ned on this Sky Bison? Yeah. Put it out here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me think this through. Why don't you call yeah, this one? Yeah, yeah, we do. Andrew, we can use bed. <laughs> Red? Just call the next Sky Bison. No, bed. Oh. B E D D. Bed. Jed and Ted and bed. <gasps> we have lead? Oh my god. Ed? We're, we're so dead? good. Lead. <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun. Dusting the village of lead. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> as as each of you have a bit of a chance to introduce yourselves to to Rangi, as she gets a bit of an understanding about who you are, and is, um, I'd say, like a, a mixture of impressed and probably a little bit horrified as well. Um, like some of the decisions that you're making, you see her kind of like nodding along a little bit, like interested and, and excited, and uh, yes, I, I think I think there there are some things that we can. Uh, Things that we can, we can, if, if you're willing to help out the cause and willing to help the avatar, there are some things that um, that we can definitely uh, get your assistance with. For the moment, I think what's best, if you, I mean, it's kind of perfect. We were looking for a small team to head out and investigate an attack on a nearby village. The four of you, uh, obviously Ted and Jed, you know each other quite well, Kiko and, and Lily. Um, I mean, if the four of you could, could go together and investigate the... We'd heard reports of a uh, of a Darfe attack on a village about two days' walk to the north. If you have some time to go and investigate, and, and if you're willing to, to do this and, and bring back reports, I think this, more than anything, would be a, a perfect introduction to uh, to our group and to uh, to what we're trying to do here. I think what we'll do is I'll send you over to Wong, just to get a bit of a briefing about the situation. Um, Wong... Um, he means he means well. I'm sure you'll be. Yeah, uh, if, if you head down that pathway, uh, take a left. You're looking for the tent that's been. Uh, there's a lot of colourful flags at the front. Um, and just if one gets a bit off track, just just get him back on track. Just tell him that that Rangi sent you and that you you need the information quickly. Uh, he can sometimes ramble a bit at times. Um, but yes, unless there's anything else, uh, when you get back, obviously. Uh, Kira, she's away at the moment, but she should be back when, uh, by the time you return, if it's if it's a quick and easy journey and you're back in a couple of days, you should be able to, to come back and I can introduce you to Kiyoshi, if you're interested. I'm but sure she'll be... find these bandits, like, how do you want it dealt with? Like, tied up, really uh, beaten up? At the moment, I, uh, I just want intel. Um, if you can, if you can observe oh. what's happened, um... Obviously, if there's uh, any action that needs to be taken, if lives are at stake, um, please do step in. But uh, obviously, don't don't step in if it's going to be too dangerous. Uh, obviously, Lily, I, I don't want you on the front lines of, of combat. Um, but uh, if if you can, yeah, if you can step in, if there's any any people in danger, that would be fantastic. And uh, do do what your heart tells you. I think is the best best way to gotcha. demonstrate. What As exactly you, do we get out of this? Well, obviously you'll be part of uh, Avatar Kiyoshi's elite fighting force. We're currently in the process of rebuilding the, the manor behind, and once that's set up, you'll have a, a base of operations. Um, 
you'll obviously have the protection of the Avatar and uh, and all of the other warriors who are joining her cause. Obviously, we were not expecting you to do this for free. Um, the uh, Flying Opera Society are currently in charge of our funds, uh, against my better judgment. Um, but uh, they'll be able to uh, to help you with a uh, a stipend, a, a daily stipend of, of gold, and also obviously food and, and drink are, are all covered. We're, we're um, distributing uh, goods that have been donated and uh, been rescued from various attacks and uh, donated to the cause. Yeah, that'll do. Where, really, I want you to see this as a chance to build a new nation. Uh, those of you who've seen what Ba Sing Se has become, or, or maybe have escaped the Fire Nation, uh, or Kiko, I mean, the Southern Water Tribe has been through some some trying times. And uh, Jed and Ted, I still don't know if I fully understand why you've left the Air Nation, but... Um, uh, I just want to hang out with my brother. Okay, Jed, I'm still not 100% sure why you've <laughs> left the Air Nation. You sort of glossed over that a little bit, but um, I'm sure you'll, you'll tell us more when you trust us a bit more. Um, but what we're trying to do here is is something different. We're trying to to set things up differently. Kyoshi's done her best to try and change the situation in Ba Sing Se, and I was there with her every step of the way, but when corruption is entrenched in the way that it is, the only way to destroy it, to break it, is to show a better way. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make a better way. Brilliant. I'll take your silence yeah. as, a, as an excited yeah. yes. Um, Head on down the pathway if you can make your way to, to Wong. Just introduce yourself. Th- thank you, Ted. Um, your vote of That's confidence of means a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I'm here. Thank you as well, Jed. Um, if you could, if you could make your way down to Wong, uh, introduce yourselves. Tell him that uh, Rangi sent you, and you're to investigate. Um, I believe it is. Um, um, let me see my report here. Koru Village. If you could go and investigate what's happened in Koru Village, the scouts reported back there'd been a disturbance of sorts. Uh, if you can report back and intercept, if there's any issues, that would be fantastic. And I guess welcome to the Kyoshi Warriors. Uh, thank you. Come along, young one. Do I look like a warrior? Uh, uh, welcome to the saying, elite Kyoshi support force. I don't think Kyoshi Warriors will stick. Just say, yeah, team, bit of a bad name. team Avatar. Uh, then we can we can yeah, be Team no, Avatar. Yeah. Um, we can be the A Team. Wong Wong Avatar. may try and swear you into the Flying Opera Company. I just want you to know that's not required. So um, do they sing? Um, yeah, do they sing and fly? Yeah, do you watch as this kind of like almost like grimace crosses her face for a moment before she can stop it, and then she like shakes herself out of it. They try. Um, they are <laughs> technically technically a, a Dao Fei organization, so please don't feel like you need to join them. I mean, they're, they're, they're working with us, but uh, Kiyoshi got us mixed up in some stuff. Uh, they're, they're, they're trustworthy for the most part. You can trust them. Uh-huh. I, they've had okay. many opportunities to, to betray me and Kiyoshi, and they, they never have. So uh, yeah. you, you can trust them. But you don't you don't need to swear okay. their oaths. I just want you to know that. That's that's the Avatar does not want you to necessarily swear in with the, the flying opera company. I know she has and she's a member of them. Against my better judgment, but you don't need to. You can if you want to. You don't need to. Hey, it sounds like we should swear in. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Do we, do we get extra <laughs> benefits? What's their dental like? Um <laughs> dental's not great, but they do give you makeup to wear. Um, and a special face paint that you have to wear when going into battle. You can use some of that, Jed. Just disappointed look. Just a very defeated, disappointed look. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's Jed's head down then. So and I'll like sort of start pushing um, Lily, like sort of like guiding her down. She's quite young. Don't I don't want to get touch lost. Me. I don't want to get lost. <laughs> uh, Ted, it's kind of perfect timing. As you as you step out, you hear this grumble from your Sky Bison, Ned. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a borrowed Ned. It's, borrowed yeah, Ned. Well, I mean, there's another borrowed there's Ned. another Air Nomad currently with the Bison. Uh, as you sort of begin walking oh, down Steve. the pathway, <laughs> I was going to go with uh, Lu Zheng, but we can go with Steve if you like. Um, well, I call him Steve. We, Steve. we call him Steve. Like he's it's like it's, it's another Mr. Library situation. That's um, fine. 
Lu Zheng is is one of your um, teachers, uh, Ted and Jed. Um, Jed, he he's not stoked about the situation with you. He's trying his best to be really cool with you about it, but he's much closer to Ted. And as you as you as he sees you, Ted, he gives you a wave over and, and gets you to follow over, calling out, um, uh, Jed, uh, Ted. I always get you two mixed up. Um, I'm just about to head off. Um, Did you want to unload the rest of your things from uh, from Ned's parcel, so from the from the saddle? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come grab it now. Brilliant. Thank you. You can catch up with your friends later. All right. Uh, uh, Jed, don't lose Lily. She's so huh? little. She's little. Don't lose her. Sure. Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep that I'll in mind. I'll bite you in your sleep, old man. I'm not that old. He's the old one. <laughs> She's scary. As you, look, you can see Lily has slightly pointed teeth. I'm like 30. A, a diet of uh, a diet of scraps and uh, yeah, to like a inedible material that's, that's has kind old. of like eroded her teeth a little bit to yeah, give them double a little the rage, guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, perfect, Archie. If you needed to run off, you may absolutely run off. That is the perfect Thank time. You. Thank you so much for joining bye. us. We will see you next week for our uh, week. first episode. See you, Bye. Bye. I forgot that was I his guess image. Come off. Uh, every time I see his him in the morph suit. <laughs> I keep forgetting that's what it is. Um, perfect. Okay. Uh, I I don't want to do the meeting with Wong without Archie because it is pretty special. So what I'll do is as Kiko, Jed and Lily, as you begin making your way down through the tents, you can see a diverse range of many, many people here. Most of them from the Earth Kingdom. Most of them appear to be villagers. Uh, Lily, you would recognize the subtle Ba Sing Se accent from the lower city. Um, a bit sort of more slang usage than the traditional um, Earth Nation dialect. It, it has sort of a lot more um, words that are a bit more clipped and a bit more condensed. And you immediately recognize a number of the uh, a number of the voices from different districts in Ba Sing Se. It looks like a number of people have fled Ba Sing Se to join this little hamlet, to join this new village. But at the moment, it doesn't look like they're very well organized. A lot of people are kind of milling about. There's some earthbenders attempting to make and prop up sections of the palace that they're working on, but no one's really taken charge at this point. That is until you see Rangi rushing across, um, trying to call out and get the attention of the workers. And when that's unsuccessful, you watch as she summons a ball of fire in her hands and then lets it loose, creating almost like a flare gun above her of fire. With uh, accompanied by a shrill whistle that she holds up to her lips. She immediately then begins trying to direct people to work in certain ways and to work together. And she is partly successful. It looks like the people begin organizing themselves and working a bit better. But there's there's a, a sense that they don't quite want to follow Rangi's instructions or they're not quite interested in doing that. Um, this is a good opportunity if anyone wanted to assess a situation and have our first roll of the campaign. It's down. Let's test it out. It's 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 we should make sure that uh, Beyond Legend is still working. Um, obviously, our favorite toolkit for running Avatar Legends is Beyond Legend. Uh, if you go to beyondlegend.games, you'll find it straight away. It's, uh, it's definitely our preferred tool for running uh, Avatar Legend campaigns. It's super easy link will be in the description below feel free to use it if you like it's completely free i, I love it uh all righty so oh thank you i did actually make that as a did you make that as a command or had i already made, I that made as that. a command? thank you <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a uh also kiko made, um, oh yeah this one have you got is this the uh, have you got a chirpy one <laughs> chirpy chirpy's chirpy doesn't <laughs> exist yet chirpy's not gonna be born for like 300 years <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, respect. <laughs> Always remember Chirpy. <laughs> Always remember Chirpy. We left Chirpy on Kyoshi Island. That's that's uh, yep. pretty funny. The so, one time that Rung wasn't like in a session, we just abandoned his animal. Yeah. So we've had two two <laughs> rolls, right uh, two rolls for assess the situation. Jed has rolled a nine, success with consequences. Kiko has rolled a seven, success with consequences. What questions would you like to ask? And Lily, if you wanted to roll and assess the I situation, will also. I thought you I'll might. ask last because mine's comes important last oh okay yours has to be last okay oh I'll, I'll ask what's the what's the sort of sentiment i get from old people like they don't really want to work are they sort of just very meandering about things or they're just back into it like oh they're just moving very slow just like nah just whatever like, kiko great question 
what you're observing as you look at these people isn't laziness. It isn't even fatigue, which is present, but it doesn't seem to be the primary reason that they're going slowly. Weirdly enough, these people don't want to go near the manor. They're scared of it or wary of it. You're not quite sure which, but whatever the situation is with this destroyed manor, they are unwilling to really do much to it. And, and while they are listening to Rangi, there's clearly a lot of respect there which at first you might not have picked. I mean, these are a lot of Earth Nation citizens following the direction of a bodyguard from the Fire Nation. She definitely has a lot more power than you might have expected, uh, and certainly a lot more leadership skills than you might have expected. But they seem very off-put, shall we say, with the ruined manner. Yeah. Hopefully that okay. answers your question. That's and good info. Arises that some curiosity in your mind. Uh, Lily, that's a nine. That's a success with consequences. Do you have a question you'd like to ask? I do. What's the most valuable thing here? Ah, uh, I thought you might ask that question. As you have a bit of a peek around, there's a few things that stand out as possibly being quite valuable. The armor that Rangi is wearing is very well-made Fire Nation armor. It's battered and a little bit old as if it hasn't hasn't been properly maintained or that it's seen a lot of combat without being taken back to a smith or to a fire nation um, uh, crafter to, to, to repair. The other thing that also stands out, that large tent where you were talking with, uh, with Rangi before, when Rangi opened up the tent flap to come out and see you, you spied a very large, very heavy looking chest just sitting by itself no padlock, just sitting in there all, all alone inside that tent. No one to keep it company. Just a, just a lonesome chest. Apart from that, this does not seem like a very rich place. A lot of people are sharing food. There's um, a large market stall with about three different stalls set up in the very center that are giving away food and supplies. They're not, then there's no coins exchanging hands. You don't get the sense this is a particularly rich area in terms of marks for gold. A lot of people seem to be sharing and don't have much even to share. But that chest, oh, it's a big chest. You, you'd want to store something good in there, right? Rich folk, they want to keep Rangi's their gold somewhere right safe. Rangi's busy right now, right? Rangi's currently talking to all of the Earth Nation citizens. The, soul, the, the Earthbenders trying to get them to, to go close and actually do their jobs on the, uh, on the abandoned manor. The second Ted stops putting his hand on my back and walks away, I'm going back to that chest. Jed was specifically told to keep an eye on you. Jed, would you respect uh, Ted's uh, instruction to you? Yeah, I I was actually going to keep an eye on both of them because oh. I uh, because um, I want to use Jed. my yeah, situation on both of them. I wanted to see yeah what kind of characters these as a new person. To like seeing what kind of characters these two new teammates are. Question. I can't believe we've had the presence of mind for you to actually go, oh, I'm going to be working with these people. Who are they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> From me. Um, um, I'm going to yeah. be tugging on Jed's Jed, shirt. Jed. I, I think I dropped something Jed, back there. I'll Jed. be right back. Uh, I'll come with you. No, no. You should stay with Kiko. He's more trouble than I am. What, what's Kiko's. my kicking some dirt, looking around suspiciously. I, 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 I grab Kiko by the shoulder and just drag him with us as we, as I start following you. Uh, good luck with that. Now, we, we, before, before we go too far down this pathway, we should actually answer, we should answer Jed's question. What kind of people are these? Um, I mean, you kind of know the descriptions from each of them. The only things I'd probably add to that in terms of what you see looking at Kiko. Kiko has a muscular build. Despite being a teenager, there's a <laughs> lithe strength there. Kiko clearly is not a, he's not new to either hard labor or potentially even fighting. I mean, despite being quite lanky, the muscles are tight and 
like there is strength there as you see Kiko kind of like tense. The other cool thing about Kiko is that Kiko, like Rung, only wears vests and has his arms mostly <laughs> exposed, which means you can easily see his upper biceps and shoulders. Is this, what is, is this it about a, vests, is this, mate? Is this just a thing that you want? Do you just want to wear vests all the time? I just just want people to see my vest, see my vest, see my vest. I, uh, I, ma I made some, I made some, uh, <laughs> I made some interpretations on the character art. I've actually given Kiko um, uh, ivory hook earrings, which are like a traditional hook earring for uh, some of the Inuits. And I've also, the, the bandages around Kiko's arms. So I've actually done the loop around the back that then leaves the forearms exposed and then starts again just after the elbow, these kind of like cloths that are bound around as a way of kind of like helping with your water bending Kiko as well. So that's why your character art has those kind of like um, uh, strips of fabric that sort of move back over each shoulder and then come down across the arms. Uh, you've also got a bracer on each arm as well, a leather bracer that starts just underneath the wrist and goes all the way down to the elbow. Yeah, Kiko looks like someone who has been outfitted with makeshift armor, pretty well made makeshift armor, and is from the Southern Water Tribe. You're not an idiot, Jed. It's very likely Kiko was mixed up in the Fifth Nation at some point or another which means that Kiko is likely being trained in a little bit of military fashion or has been trained as a warrior. Um, it's also pretty obvious that Kiko is a waterbender. Kiko, I'm guessing you do have a flask of water by your side at all times. For you. Yeah. <laughs> so yep. it's pretty, pretty obvious Kiko is a waterbender as well. <laughs> Lily is a bit harder to read. Your first thought is to kind of discount her because she's a child, but she does have this bandolier around her shoulders, over the top of her jacket, which has these little vials and little pouches of leather and little components. And the sash that she has at her side, uh, this, I'm imagining quite kind of like a, like a, um, a satchel almost, Kiko, at the bottom end of your, of your leather straps, clinks a little bit as she walks, belying that it maybe contains metal of some sort. And the other thing I kind of added uh, is around your wrist, you have a fuse that you kind of use to help hold your sleeves. It's, it's an actual fuse from one of your smoke bombs that you can see like wrapped around your wrist to help hold the uh, the fabric in place. You just use I mean, it makes sense. Hands. I probably stole the clothes from somewhere and they were too big for me. Yeah, so I, I added I added some hints of your background to that and uh, around the top knot as well, it, it's green fabric uh, to create your top knot. Uh, I've also stashed, it's very hard to see on the overlay. I might even make it a little bit bigger. There is um, a little lock pick jammed in there as well <laughs> to nice. help like hold that's in position awesome. that's pretending to be a hairpin so i added i added some kind of like fun features uh, to the character art so your initial thoughts is oh lily's just a child and then it's like no no no, no this no, is a street there's, urchin there's from Sing say if she yeah, survived yeah. on her own there's more here um and I mean, to survive as a child on the streets of Barsing, say, either she's mixed up with Dao Fei or she's managed to avoid being mixed up with Dao Fei, which is somehow oh, more impressive. Yeah. yeah. If she's not been brought into a Dao Fei group and recruited and she's done this on her own, this is a skilled, intelligent child. Okay, instead of going uh, Kiko by the shoulders, then I'm saying that he's a warrior. He's tough as nails, uh, yeah. Um, you can still go by the shoulders. Uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> Still got some work to do, but okay. Um, he, he can, there's more muscle to be had there. Don't worry about that. Um, uh, Kiko, we need to help Poppy with something she lost. I, oh, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I just need to pee. You can't follow me. Oh, okay. So see, she said that. I didn't want to tell you. You're a stranger. I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to go take my Dax down. That makes sense. That but checks that out. Sort of. <laughs> no, that checks yeah. out. <laughs> checks out. <laughs> that checks out. Checks out. Flawless logic. So, am I good to like go? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do we, do we need to ask where they are? Or like, what's happening? I'll find someone. Don't worry. Okay. Perfect. I wander off. <laughs> Lily, I'm assuming you're making a beeline back for the tent, basically. Oh. Oh, yeah, but I'm making it look like I'm Nonchalant. trying to find someone to talk to and find where the bathroom is. I'm like having a bit of a sticky peek around and then I make it look like I've spotted the perfect spot behind the tent and I'm like, there it is. And then like, but to myself kind of thing, make it look really convincing. And then I run around behind the back of the tent. Now it's just a standard tent, right? I can crawl underneath the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's just a fabric tent marked with the Fire Nation colors. It's pretty big. It looks like it could easily hold like four or five sleeping pallets or, or, or bed rolls, maybe six bed rolls. It, it's pretty large for a tent. And there's two poles okay, holding cool. it up. It's got two points where it's it's held up. 
Cool. Begin in the average tent. Yeah, begin in the average tent. <laughs> I will run around the back and sneak in underneath. And As you sneak into the tent, despite the bright sunlight outside, your eyes don't take any time to adjust to the dark interior at all. There are two wall sconces attached, almost like torches attached to the poles that are holding up the roof, providing ample light inside the tent. You can see there is one large bed at the far uh, left-hand side of the of the tent, uh, a small screen, um, painted fabric uh, held up in, in wooden frames to help kind of give a bit of privacy to it. You can also see what looks like a salvaged wardrobe from the mansion. There's a section where you can see it's almost burned at the top half, but one of the drawers is partially open. You can see clothes sort of rustled and, and half falling out from beside the bed. On the other side of the bed, clothes are just stacked up on what can only be described as a floor drobe. It looks like two people are using this bed, one of whom is much tidier than the other and much more uh, aware of their creeping personal space. Apart from the bed, you can also see a large table strewn with paper, maps, charts, reports, as well as what looks like a writing desk over the far side. Next to the writing desk is the large banded chest that you saw from outside the tent. And as you creep closer, you can indeed see there is no lock in place. This chest is just sitting there. The latch actually has been busted off. It looks like the latch was broken. Maybe this has been salvaged from the manor as well, and they haven't got around to repairing it. Fools. The gold that's inside is almost yours, Lily. Brilliant. Now, do you want me to roll with my bad habits? Yes, please. I'm surprised I got away with trespassing without having to do it. Okay, so I need to shift my balance towards survival and then roll with survival. Please. Artemis? Shit. That's a real shame. Uh, what happens <laughs> oh, no. on this? What happens on this? I'm happy you're caught, caught by someone dangerous or powerful and they complicate your life. As you creep into the tent and reach out a hand ready to open the chest, suddenly there's a burst of fire that strikes across the back of your hand. And as you snatch your hand back and look up, you see Rangi staring down at you. <sighs> Poppy, this is, this is our private tent. There's no reason you need to be in here. Sorry, I was honestly looking for the bathroom and then I saw a bug no, on no, top of no, it no, and no, I no, wanted to no, kill it. That's not going to fly. I'm not an idiot. I've dealt with kids it like you fly, before. It was you're right. I've dealt with kids like you before, all right? And I know the situation you've been in with Ba Sing Se, you had to fight for your life. You had to constantly be looking out for yourself. Things are different here, and I know you're not going to trust us straight away, but I promise we're not trying to keep things from you. We're all working together. Okay, you... if you're not keeping things from me, then what's in the chest? Because it's a really big chest. Would you like to see? Yeah. You know how they say, like, curiosity killed the catfish? I'm the catfish. Yeah, wh what happened to that catfish? Ah. Uh, can you not kill me, please? I'm not going to kill you. Okay, good. Yeah. Knowledge, Thanks. knowledge brought the catfish back. I'll show you what's in the chest. With that, Rangi steps forward and opens up the lid. In your mind, Lily, this would be overflowing with gold, gemstones, a, a treasure trove. But instead, it's full of really mundane items. At first, it looks like junk. There's these two battered metal fans tucked in the corner, some green strips of fabric, almost like a bed sheet. It's so large and so much folded up, as well as what looks like a, a small headdress that's been pretty worn and a bit broken. The strap is actually partially severed on one side, as well as two of the biggest boots you've ever seen in your life. A, a, someone mountain tall who could stomp on an entire village must wear these. Now, would I 20, recognize minimum. the headdress as something Kiyoshi has worn? Like, would I have recognized that from a depiction unless, of her in some way or unless you've anyone seen, would have talked about it? Unless you've seen Kiyoshi uh, in person, the, the headdress hasn't really come up. It's mostly the face mm. paint that people recognize, and that's what's being associated yeah. with it. People kind of see Kiyoshi at this point. A lot of people see her as more spirit than, than Avatar. Mm. Excuse me. And a Did lot they of people- they mention her fans? 
in it's stories it, about her. Occasionally, occasionally the fans might have been mentioned, but like the fans of Kiyoshi when they're mentioned are, are beautiful and strong and powerful. These yeah. are busted and a bit broken. It looks like they've been partially burned. You can see one bit where the metals actually come apart and the, the fan doesn't even close properly. These are just battered treasures. Underneath the green fabric, you watch as Rangi sort of seeing your curiosity and disappointment slowly pushes aside the green fabric and underneath you can see what looks like some Fire Nation armor. Again, pretty battered. Um, it looks like it's slightly more uh, combat style than what Rangi's currently wearing. What she's wearing is much more kind of like day-to-day -day armor. This looks like it's much more designed for battle. You can see the shoulder pads actually cover and curl down to, to protect the shoulders. The pauldrons, gloves, greaves, all of that is interlocking to provide as much protection as possible. And which is she pulls aside the fabric and shows you and goes, not what you were expecting. I want to pick up, how big do you think the opening of the boot is compared to my head? The opening of the chest? No, the boot. boot. Oh, the boot. Yeah, it's a good question. You probably, like, in the interests of maintaining the, the kind of, like, physics of the show, yeah, you can totally fit your head in. <laughs> No okay. problem. I'm going to stick it's a cartoon, my head right? in the boot and be like, who's oh, me? Oh. Are this oh, big? Man. I'm definitely going to need some sort of constitution saving throw. Um, can I? <laughs> What's the avatar equivalent? Let me have a quick look. I think the closest. Could I get you to push, uh, push your, your luck? luck? Yeah, push Harmony. your luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> push your luck, please, to see how you go with this. Nine. Nine. That is a partial success. Lily, you're no stranger to well-worn clothes and, and the, the scent of unwashed bodies. But oh boy, these boots have been worn. <laughs> these boots are made for walking and someone has absolutely walked a long distance in them. Um, I, I mean, as you, as you stick your head in and then you get a bit of a waft of the smell and kind of pull your head out a second later, it's not it's not disgusting to you. It's just like, that's what boots smell like. It's just, just what they smell like. I look at her like, this stinks. Who are these people? You watch as a smile plays across Rangi's face. She goes, um, you're holding uh, some pretty pretty famous footwear there. I mean, you better be careful who you uh, who you tell that it's stinky to. But people know feet stink. Why would yeah, it matter? But some people think that the Avatar couldn't possibly have stinky feet. I drop the boot and then I stare at it, pick it up. Brush it off, put it carefully back in the chest. <laughs> oh my god, this is Kiyoshi stuff. Rangi Why smiles. are you showing me this? Well, it's, it's nothing special. Why it's... would you let me put my head in that? Well, you were a bit quick. I didn't have a chance to stop you. Yeah. Am I going to be a spirit now? No. I mean... Is the uh, avatar going to kill me? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think she'd find this quite funny, to be honest. Um, don't tell her. That's embarrassing. I can't promise that. If I get bored or if I like I, I don't keep much from Kiyoshi and this is a pretty funny story I, I can't promise I'll keep it secret but I will promise that I will keep secret the fact that you snuck in here to steal her stuff how about that okay I wasn't stealing I told you there was a bug I was trying to kill it she it could have been down. trying to steal Kiyoshi's stuff <laughs> she kneels down nods and goes yeah I'm I'm sure Avatar Kiyoshi will be really pleased that her stuff is safe from bugs with you around and gives You're you a so smile. Welcome. Also, where's the bathroom, please? I need to pee. I'm I'm not falling for the fact that you were trying to get in and look through the stuff. There's no hidden treasures here. Um, if you're if you're after clothing and things like that, let me know and I can get it for you. If you're actually looking for the bathroom, what you need to do: head out the door, turn right, go down past the beginning of the palisade wall, and then if you turn left at that point, you'll come across some latrines that have been set up. Okay. Thanks. Can I go now? Yes. On one condition. Yeah. You're not going to sneak into any other people's private things, are you? Nah. This think, chest just looked really pretty. I think I'm going to need to hear a promise on that one. Ugh. At least while you're in our <laughs> camp. Whatever you do in Barsing Say is up to you. Just don't get caught when you're in Barsing Say, all right? But while you're here with us... Just remember that we're all working together. And it's I mean, so how would you like it if people were going through your stuff, Lily? Now, can I use trick and NPC? Yeah, definitely. Question yeah, question cool. Seven, success with consequences. 
you know, um, you know, she doesn't fully believe you, <laughs> Lily. But also, it, it's you get my the fingers sense. are crossed behind my back. I promise I won't break into anybody else's tent and steal their stuff. She gives you a very knowing smile, as if she knows that you're full of shit, but also doesn't doesn't <laughs> really want to like continually call out call out a child on this and like put you on the spot. I mean, you're not you're not her kid, and on top of that, she knows that. Given your background, she, you've had to do has, this stuff to survive. She she gets it. She has way better things to do. She <laughs> yeah, honestly, she's already spent so long on this kid. Avatar Kiyoshi for one. Uh, she nods, and go on then, run along. But I really don't want to have someone else catch you doing bad stuff because not everyone's as cool as I am. You know, I there are some people you are here. Pretty cool. Thank you. I I think I'm all right. But it's good to keep in mind that. A lot of the people who come here are ex Darfei or currently Darfei. This place is supposed to be a safe haven, but I'm not going to lie and say that it is safe yet. So just be careful whose stuff you're going through, okay? I don't want to. I don't want to be caught by some uh, torturer for a Darfei group who's stuck their way into camp and is pretending to be nice. All right, I haven't had a chance to fully vet everyone yet. There's so many new people coming every day, and Kyoshi's off doing. It. Look. Just be careful. That's all I ask, all right? Don't get into trouble. Okay, promise. Great. Go on, off you go. I've got a lot of things I need to do. Okay, I run back out to Jed and Kikese. By the way, guys, if you're looking for the bathroom and I give them the directions. Nice. <laughs> nice. Perfect getaway. <laughs> <laughs> Cover in hey, no. You hear You hear in your earpiece, like, <laughs> excellent work, Snake. Back to base. <laughs> Uh, while... <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Uh, can I, can I say, like, oh, well, Poppy, you're, thanks for that. That's really helpful. Poppy. Yeah, not it, it's soon. But, um, can I smell? No. Can I smell <laughs> she, just, she just smelled the boot. She didn't, like, wear it for any length of time. Uh, while Lily is uh, going, okay. we, just quickly just with... I stuck with my head feet. in it and pulled it off. Quickly with Kiko <laughs> and Jed, while Lily takes off for a few moments, uh, Lily going by Poppy. Uh, have you have you told the actual people your name or have you lied and just no. said... Okay, I've great. lied to everyone. That's why I've called you. Yeah, probably it's, it's it's gonna probably be every time I've mentioned it's gonna it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. For podcast listeners, if you're confused, um, leave an angry message for Brie, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kiko, and Jed. It's much because easier for people watching. Yet. I know, that's fair. I know. The character reasons are really solid. Um, Kiko and Jed, while Lily slash Poppy takes off, what would you two be doing? B? Mm. Well, I'd be wandering over to say hello to the workers. And probably just go on to I think you're like, wrong. I think you're wrong showing. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, no, I can't talk to the working man. If you guys, if you guys had a lie, woe woe. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a yeah. brand new town that's just been started. I hear the Bolo family yeah. have just moved in there, and they're thinking about setting up a coal mine. Uh, coal's the future yeah. of energy. So, I don't uh, know if you knew that. <laughs> Coal, you say, eh? Oh, coal. <laughs> Love coal. It's too <laughs> funny. As you walk over and start talking to the workers, um, one of the guys who's there nods and goes, yeah, I've, um, my family's recently moved out to Lai Wowo. And um, I don't know if you heard of it. It's a new town that's just been formed over towards the west, uh, northwest of here. But uh, they're thinking about setting up a coal mine and uh, it just sounds unhealthy, you know, like all that coal dust getting in the lungs. So uh, I'm here to... I guess I'm here to fight bandits, which in a weird way is probably safer for me long term than breathing in coal <laughs> dust every day. This is why, this is why I'm just going to like try and put on like I'm trying. I'm going to try to figure out my voice for this sort of dude here to be like normal, but like this like oh oh, oh yeah 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 search me yeah. That's, uh, that's wrong, uh, no, no, Are you, are you doing? <laughs> are you yeah. doing it? I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out how I can do a fake, but I don't know how to do a fake. It's just my voice. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, Kiko, wrong, so Kiko's trying to yeah. match their voice. Okay, cool. C can you give us yeah. Kiko's voice first, just so I've got it tuned in my mind, and then I'm give us sure Kiko pretending to be someone else. I'm fairly sure Kiko's just going to be a normal voice. Perfect. Easy done. Things. Like, easy, I don't easy. think I can carry like a hard note or anything. No, that's so fine. it's like. Yeah, I'm Kiko. Yeah, that's what I do. Do you so, want what oh, you can, okay, what you can do if you want to if you want to get away yeah, with like doing essentially right. like fake cheap trick accents? Just cut off the last little mm. syllable of some words, and it immediately sounds like sort of uh, working class British. You'd be like, "Yeah, all right, I'm, I'm Kiko. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just uh, just yeah, sort of check things uh, out." And you just drop that last little hard consonant and just let it fall off. It's very hard because as Aussies, we yeah. love the hard consonant. We fucking go for it every time it comes up, but. 
if you wanted to get I just away. Just go turn on a bit of my peaky blinders and just get into the. Hey, g'day, mate. How's things? You doing good? Still sounds like you, but that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Better in my head. So give it. So give us. So so Kiko's currently trying to pretend to be like a, a working class yeah. Earth Nation citizen. Yeah. Give us. Give us a bit of that. What does Kiko yeah. say to these workers? I mean, as you as you walk up, yeah. Kiko, there's about eight of them gathered around. Clearly, Earthbenders. None of them are wearing shoes. They're very dirty, covered in dust, and you can see them again, looking really reticently up towards the mansion, not really wanting to go close, looking around as if there's anything else to do but that. Wanting over, like hand up like that, looking over the mansion out of this, down at the guys, like pretty hard day of work, is it, lads? Yeah, look, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of work to be done on the on the manor, and. Um, I mean, the avatars commanded that we we get it ready to get it ready to receive guests and, and house people, but um, it just doesn't feel right, you know. It doesn't feel right at all. Bill just puts his like arm down in like a crate. He's like, doesn't feel doesn't feel right. It's got a big hole in it. That's not very right. How how to get a big hole in it? An older Earthbender smiles with these like crooked missing teeth. Are you, are you saying you don't know what happened to the Avatar Mansion? To the Avatar Estate, well, you don't know what happened? It's... Gotta take a guess that someone threw a big rock at it? Maybe? Oh, boys. Or... Boys, he, 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 he doesn't know. He doesn't know what happened. Well, look, are you I'm joining the working crews? <laughs> You're joining the working crews, right, mate? We can get you out there to, to go and do some work. Yeah, I'm doing a bit of um, bandit work and stuff like that, you know. Just you know, just recently come on board. You know how Wait, it is. So, hang on. You so know, you're not joining the working crews. Things. You're you're on bandit cleanup. Yeah, bandit cleanup. But you know how it is. You get told to get one job done. Before you know, they're going to ask for one little thing. Give an inch, take a mile. Yada yada yada. So might be helping out sooner than you think. To be honest. Great. Well, look. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you, great. We'll, we'll we'll make sure we uh, make sure we get you on the uh, the first working crew in the morning when you're back. Hey, mate. How's that sound? Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I'll, I'll swing with the boys, but um, it seems like things like everyone's a bit down here, eh? Like no one's really happy about this whole thing. But looks of it, just oh, call it as I see it. You don't have to worry about it. Nothing no you need to seems... worry about. Nah, nah, it's all good. Nothing. You don't need to. You don't need to trouble yourself with it. You got to go with the flow, right? That's what would have been to say. Go with the flow. Just go with the flow. Yeah, no. I always, always got to go off the flow. But oh god. Um. Would you like to try and plead <laughs> to get a bit of information from them? Is that what I'm? I'm kind of yeah, sensing. That's, yeah, that's that's all. I was trying to remember what it was in my head and like plead an NPC. And it's like, but, come on, mate, you would obviously want to tell someone who's new what's going on around here, right? Like, why is there a big bloody hole inside the manor? See the plead, mate. Really see. nicely. Let's have a look. Uh, plead is that passion or is uh, it creativity? I believe it is creativity. Harmony. I was wrong. Harmony. Harmony. It's your Ooh. special stat. Hasn't come through yet. Can you see it on your screen yet? There we go. Four. That is a miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's at this point that the workers kind of nudge each other and go, "Look, we'll, we'll. When do you get back from your 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 easy bandit cleanup job? Whatever you're walking about, just having fun. Uh, when do you when do you get back? We'll, we'll teach you. To, we'll get you to do some real work with us, eh? Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll get you over and you can help us out with what's going on up there, eh? Yeah, of course. Sounds good, lads. Sounds good. Sounds good. Hey, I won't. I won't take you out of your hard work this afternoon. I'll let you guys uh, get back to it and stuff. They just nod and go back to ignoring you, uh, Jed. Before we wrap up, what would Jed be doing? Eating Cheetos. Well, no, they're, they're snakes. He's eating snakes. He's muted himself. He's clearly not prepared. <laughs> no. Um. I. I was just gonna. Stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was. I'm going to talk to Kiko, but seeing Kiko walk off, I would probably be standing around a lot. Kiko's like, gone for like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. That conversation yeah, 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 yeah. was like, like during, like during that phase, like yeah. I'm just sitting there lost. Like what, what everything I was meant to do has just vanished. <laughs> um, what's happening right now? Um, There's a lot going on around you, Jed. I mean, you're used to quiet contemplation. There are raised voices, people running past, sounds of machinery, be, think, the sounds of... I've used to it because of... Oh, because you've been out for a while. And I've been... How I was taught... Like, I was more on the offensive side of the Abnobads. Yep. So I'm more used to, like... And I'm, like, more built 
I'm, not I'm going to make a slight change to your character in that case, Jed. I'm going to say that your master was Kelsang. Okay. Kelsang, one and of the. That's why I trusted him. And you know that Kelsang was banned from the. Or not banned, but he lost a lot of his traction because he used his airbending to create a massive storm and he killed people, sunk ships and killed people. That's like, yeah. Before like, the I avatar was, like, was located. So I was just reading through my thing late, like after yeah. I described my character, I'm like, oh, one of my mistakes is I badly injured someone. Uh, I'm going to say maybe you and Kelsang even were working together. I mean, Kelsang was a personal okay. friend of Avatar Kurok and one of his airbending masters. So he's, he, he was a very, very skilled airbender. And then after Kurok passed, uh, I think it was after Kurok passed, he um, he was responsible for the destruction of a fleet of ships with the creation of a storm. I'm going to say that he didn't do it alone, but Kelsang took the fall claimed full responsibility despite the fact that maybe you helped him a little bit as well and that's one of the cool. guilts that you're carrying around that yep. fits in really nicely with the story and with Kelsang's character he absolutely would have taken the fall for one of his students yep. that's awesome. awesome I really like that that ties in really nicely with the books really nicely okay. actually Sorry. and oh, you're the perfect age notes. as well you're absolutely the perfect age to have been like a teenager when that happened or like not a teenager per se but like a, a young adult impressionable following Kelsang's instructions hmm. and then when the storm got out of control and and killed people Kelsang said no, it's, it's okay no, you do not need to worry I will take the fall for this you you continue your studies as normal yep okay cool Shit. nice awesome that's awesome um but yeah like I'd still be like sort of there like what's happened everyone's just sort of abandoned what we're meant to do I'm just standing like oh okay <laughs> then when Kiko goes back I'm like oh Kiko like from when I uh, observed, Indeed. like his muscular, like his more military build. I'll ask. So, what did you do exactly before you got here? Oh, a bit of this and that, you know how it is. Did a bit of work at the docks. Done some work fishing. I've moved goods. I've done entertainment for a bit. Worked in pubs. You know how it is. Bit of here, there, everywhere sort of work. All around the place, you know. We've got a... How about you? Like, you, do you airbenders work? Is that... That's not a thing, is it? You guys I... Don't work? Not really an air... Nomad anymore. Still an airbender, just not an air nomad. That sounds like the most nomad thing you can do is not be, be part of a nomad. So, I'd argue now you're more of a nomad than those other guys. I guess, but... Okay, fair. Yep, okay. But your outfit doesn't really match what you just said. You have quite the assortment of leathers on you. Yeah, yeah, no, leathers is sort of what I'm about. I'm not much of an armor, clink clank, sort of stuff like that. I don't like all that sort of noise going around, you know. So sort of fun part of the job, like a bit of security work in the past and all that. Ah, course, okay, you know? yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not not one for standing in front of a you know some rich noble's house or diplomat. You know how it is, and your little like shiny armors, and bacon in the sun. No, 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 oh, no, no. I don't know that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's one good thing for air nomads. You don't have to, air benders. Don't have to worry about any armors or anything. Uh, but I guess what? What? Don't mind me asking here. How does one get out of their nomads? Just thinking out loud. Just Do you thinking kill again. a man. Do you steal something? <laughs> is it from gaining like employment? Is that do it? Because I heard that money is not a thing. So yeah. I'm guessing that's what happens to do it. But... Disagreement with ideals. I hear you, and I won't push it anymore. Good. Perfect. As at that point, Lily rushes up, announces the location of the toilets, and then the three of you make your way down towards the colourful tent that you were directed to. Yes, Jed. Puppy, does that mean you still need to go to the toilets? We can go down that way if we need. No, I just went. But you I'm said they're down telling, that way, not that I'm way. I'm telling you where they are in case you need to find them. Because you would have been coming running from the other way, I assume. 
Yeah. I... She, you didn't see Poppy approach, Lily approach. She just kind of appeared behind you as you were talking. She just to like Kiko. just spawns, like just like. Because <laughs> there's lots of people. I'm very small. <laughs> And I would be good at sneaking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing is, well, Lily is not the only child. There are other children here. A lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of kids running around in like small gangs, essentially running around. Some of them working clearly as messages, messengers carrying like satchels full of notes and papers, running up and down. A few helping to carry boxes and things like that. They all look like they're pretty happy, which is something that might stand out to Lily a little bit. I mean, you you know what kids on the street look like and there's not this sort of laughter this joyous laughter all around but there is here and these kids they're wearing clothes that are well repaired well maintained they're clearly well fed this place is a bit different to Ba Sing Se that'd be what you pick up perfect I'm gonna make one of these gangs my gang yeah, I wondered that. We, we are your gang. <laughs> we're going to recruit some kids. So, <laughs> um, we are your gang. Unlike in of War, you're kind of going to have like a home base here in Yokoya Village. And uh, you'll be doing like missions out and coming back. And the idea is that the end of each mission will be when we go through the growth questions and things like that. And it kind of gives a really nice central hub for you to do all of your, all of your things. Um, as you make your way down towards the colourful tent, Ted also rushes up and joins you. And that is where we are going to leave off for tonight as you approach the colourful tent and hear from inside uh, a very loud tenor voice sing slightly off key. La Siloi from inside the tent. That is where we're going to leave off for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for coming and joining us for our session zero of our Legacy of Kiyoshi session. Um, session zeros are always a little bit kind of like a mixture of uh, uh, like talking through mechanics, getting characters set up. I really like to mix in as much narrative as I can though, because it is a really cool way to explore the characters. And, and as you can see, like we kind of made some adjustments and, and had some ideas about our characters simply because of the narrative that we were telling. So if any of you uh, watching are thinking of running a game or are running a game, uh, having a kind of narrative structure to how you run Session Zero is really cool. And not just for Avatar Legends, I, I do it for D&D as well. Um, I think it's really, really cool to have it as kind of like a narrative structure. Hopefully, hopefully this is everything we needed to organize for all the characters before we start. I, I don't think there's anything we've overlooked mechanics wise. I think we're all ready to go. Everything else we'll learn on the fly as we did the very first time with uh, with Avatar Legends, given that we started when it was still in Kickstarter stage. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for coming and joining us. Uh, if you are uh, enjoying this, if you've, if you've enjoyed what you've watched here, uh, or listened here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, or the like button. If you can leave a comment, let me know. Have you read the Kiyoshi books? Have you run one of the Kiyoshi campaigns? There's actually two pre-written Kiyoshi campaigns that you can run from the official book and from the Wan Shi Tong's Adventure Guide. This is taking place after both of those. And I have assumed that both of those pre-written campaigns have taken place with other people. So we'll be going as if they are canon for the story. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you've played through one of those, let me know in the comments if, you, if you've enjoyed this, let me know. Otherwise, from all of us here tonight, stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you next week for episode one. It's good to say that again with Avatar Legends, and it's good to have all of your lovely faces here. All right, everybody. Thank you so much again. We will see you all again very, very soon. Until then, everyone. See you later. Bye! 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 Bye.